um, were in a cold tub together. Yeah, I remember during, that. During an earthquake. Yes, I remember, I remember, remember that. that? Yeah. I remember that because we were in a cold tub and we were taking the piss out of each other. Yep. And then the whole cold tub started shaking like this. And I turned to you, I was like, Brian, stop <laughs> shaking the tub. <laughs> and then you looked at me and like, bro, it's an earthquake. And yeah. both of us just shot to a doorway and we're just like, please God, Yeah, please what's God. happening? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Shaw Trade Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Shaw. And today I am joined by none other than Mr. Eddie Hall, 2017 World's Strongest Man. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm glad glad to have you here. I feel like this is something you probably have been looking forward to. I've been looking forward to it with you. Have you? I have. I have, actually. I yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. I have. We've been pals for a long time and we've done a lot of traveling together we've done a lot of strongman shows together we've done tv shows together but we've never actually hung out at our own sort of expense is probably probably the right way to yeah, put it outside know? of outside, outside of, of those outside things. of work yeah yeah absolutely so yeah this is nice you know i've come to your home and it's amazing scenery everything been up to your mountain home at the weekend that was, that was phenomenal so yeah it's nice to come and hang and you've uh, you took me in as part of the family yeah it's great so i I'm excited to learn more. I don't know if I can learn more, but I want everybody else to learn more that hasn't maybe heard your full story. I mean, obviously you put a lot of stuff out there and people follow you and your journey. And, you know, you obviously had some, you know, documentary type things following your path and that type of thing. But I want to dig in a little bit more just to you, right? What makes you tick, the mentality, the approach, some of those things going in because, I think you and I behind closed doors have had more detailed conversations about that type of stuff and uh, almost like heart to hearts about, you know, things that we were going through that type of stuff, which is, yeah. which a lot of people don't see cause that wasn't ever on camera. Yeah. Right. So it, it's just a little bit different, but real quick, not that I want to dwell on this really long, but, but, you know, set the stage for everybody, kind of your childhood uh, growing up Stoke on Trent and what it was like, what, you know, the culture kind of was there mm -hmm. for you as a kid. Um, and then obviously with, with your brothers and family and that type of thing. So I guess, I mean, growing up in, in England itself is, is quite a task. You know, it, it's basically built of many thousands of what we call council estates. And within these council estates, there's a lot of poverty. You know, people struggle to you know, pay the bills and struggle to put food on the table and put fuel in the car and whatever else. And I was, I'll be honest, I was fortunate enough to have parents that were always willing to push the boundaries to give the best for us. And don't get me wrong, there has been times where I've seen my mum cry because she's been unable to put fuel in the car or buy food. You know, I've seen that happen, you know, and it has been tough. And I think we're very blessed. You know, we've always lived in a nice area of it's called the Westlands in uh in Stoke on Trent, which is quite a relative relatively nice area. But we're surrounded by the council estates. And of course, being boys, and I was the youngest of three brothers, that's that's who we hung around with. You know, we didn't hung around with the other people on the estate, the posh boys as we always call them. We would always go into the council estates and go and hang around with them. So we were brought up with a you know, with a fists. That's how we were brought up. We were brought up learn, you know, from day one you have to fight. You have to learn how to sort of defend yourself. And being the youngest of three brothers, I suppose you have to be that person anyway because you're always punched and kicked. You're always picked on. You always got something being stolen from you and you're always called names. So I guess my upbringing was, it was nice. You know, I lived in a good area, but it was rough. You know, very rough. Lots of fighting, lots of like drugs and drink and all those sort of things. So, but as I say, I had two great parents who, really kept us all grounded at all times. You know, we could go out and be little shits. We could go out and do naughty things and go and get in trouble with the police and whatever else. But we'd always come home when we'd be under under my dad's iron fist, you know. He was quite a stern man. You know, if we messed about, we got whipped. And that's how it was back then. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and people might frown upon that, but honestly, like, I'm grateful for that because yep. if it wasn't for those... uh those scenes happen, I don't get too much, too much detail about that. I don't want to paint my dad as an ogre, he's not, yeah. he's a great dad. But if 
it wasn't for those things happening, I believe me, me and potentially one of our brothers especially would probably be in prison, drunk drugs, uh, drink drugs, whatever. So, <clears throat> so yeah, very, very rough upbringing, but also a very blessed upbringing at the same time. Yeah. So how, how much of an age difference was there between you and your brothers? So I think there's one and a half years between all three of us in terms of like, so my brothers, my middle brothers are one and a half year older than me. And then my eldest brother is one and a half years older than him. So you guys aren't far apart. No, no, not at all. So it was, I would imagine kind of a battle just between you three all the time. Right. It was and you, pro you probably yeah. drove, and I've heard this story to be fair, but I, you, I know that you drove your mom crazy for <laughs> sure. And dad probably too. I mean, yeah. it's, it's uh, something I can only imagine. We have two boys and, and they're, you know, sometimes best friends, sometimes fighting and it can shift very, very quickly between oh, yeah. the two. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, growing up, that was probably, probably a little bit different, but I want to say on that point as well, you know, my dad was the same way, right? Like you'd, you'd walk in and you, you did not mess up. That was something you didn't do. And, you know, I'm also grateful for that. So spankings and, and this type of thing where you're saying, and you're going into it and I understand you're kind of, you know, gracefully going past that, but I'm thankful for it too. Right. Because it helped mold me into who I am. Right. And, and I think that that's something that's important. Right. And you yeah. can't, you know, I think that, um, you know, a lot of parents out there for whatever reason, and I don't know what that reason is, and I don't necessarily want to get off on this topic too much, but at the same time, it's good for kids, right? Yeah, to learn yeah. those boundaries. And it's good for kids to understand right from wrong. And, you know, a lot of times it's for their own benefit and in the long run can make them a better adult. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that's a good way to summarize it. So, you know, there's, there are certain things that are, that are frowned upon, but as a parent, it's not easy to discipline your kids, but yeah. it needs to happen at times. So, you know, I, I agree with that hundred percent, man. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think, um, I think we're going for a generation now of, because the, the spankings are, are, are so frowned upon in yeah. this generation. Like if you lay a finger on your child, you're, you're an abuser, you know, it's ridiculous. And you know, you've, you're violent and, and this and that. And, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I've got, I've got kids of my own now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son, very, 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 very rarely, you know, he'll get a slap on his ass if he's naughty, mm -hmm. you know. But I'll always try and use words first. Yeah. But sometimes it's a bit like, I hate to use the, the, the same sort of scenario, but it's a bit like training a dog. You know, with, with dogs, you can go over things over and over again. Sometimes you need that, you know, you've got that shot collar on a dog and sometimes you need that. Yep. Sometimes you need that little bit of like get in check. Yep. And it's the same with a kid sometimes, you know, yep. sometimes words just aren't enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, and I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting both of your parents and, and um, it was fun, man. It was, fu we actually had a, a meal at your house as part of the strongest man in history and, you know, got to interact and, and uh, have fun, you know, yeah. so it was good. It was good. I, I really enjoyed that, that for sure. And, and, you know, getting to see a little bit more of uh, your, um, area and and your family and that that type of things because one of your brothers was there right during that show is that um, right um yeah i think my eldest brother was there i think it was alex was it yeah yeah and then yeah. my middle brother lives in australia so he it was an easy commute to <laughs> to come back but so going going through that type of childhood obviously hardened you up a little bit some of the things that you saw growing up and had to experience you know i mean and a lot of kids don't go through that mm -hmm. right it's not normal and and um i think you know, we'll get into this a little bit more in, in a little bit more detail, I should say, as we go along, but childhood can, can mold you a lot in, into who you are. And so, you know, as you got into school, what did you gravitate towards as far as athletics, as far as challenges, school? I mean, what, what did that really look like for you? So I was actually very, very lucky in that department where both, my mom was very athletic. So my mom was a swimming teacher for many, many years. And she loved doing the, what you call Ironmans. So it's like the, it's ridiculous. You do like the, you do like a, a marathon run and then you do like a 5K swim and then a 120K bike ride. And it takes like 12 hours to complete. And that's the kind of thing my mom was into. So and this is when you were growing up too. <clears throat> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so like my mom was a super fit woman. You know, she used to teach 
uh, they call it aquarobics. So like you get people in a swimming pool and you get someone on the side doing all the exercises. So, and, you know, as a kid, I remember going to, because I was always sort of chucked out of school and, you know, suspended and whatever else and expelled. And so I always had to go to my mom, with my mom to work. And she used to work with like disabled kids. And she used to, be, you know, work all day as a swimming teacher and then do her exercises. And then at night she'd be teaching acrobics and on the pool side, she'd be jumping up, doing star jumps and like all this, all this kind of stuff in the air that you'd think it'd be impossible. And she just did that day in, day out. So my mom was a super fit lady. And I suppose that having that, having that, that person as a sort of role model from a very young age does inspire you to, you know, get into sport. So both my eldest brothers were swimmers. They were sort of like swimming club level swimmers. And they represented my local area, which is Staffordshire. That's like the region. Like you've got Colorado, we've got, we've got Staffordshire. And I think from age five, Obviously, I couldn't be left at home alone to do do my own stuff, so I have to. I dragged along to these swimming training sessions, and at age five, I was you know training ten hours a week in the pool, you know doing doing at swim- five years old, at five years old, and fast forward to ten years old, I sort of like I had this really competitive nature within me, and and it's, you you get that with brothers, like everything is a competition. Yeah. So like you walk into school, that's a race. You're eating your tea. That, that's a race. You can eat it the quickest, you know. You eat tea? Uh, dinner, we call it. We call it, Yeah, we call it tea in, in the UK. We yeah. call it tea in the UK, sorry. Okay, sorry. I just, I mean, I, just a question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a race. It's, yeah. Regardless of if you eat it or you drink yeah. it, you, it's a race. Yeah, everything's a competition. So I suppose going to swimming with my eldest brothers, I used to hate that they were faster than me. Um you know, I used to come home and I'd, I'd be upset, I'd be crying, I'd be angry, I'd be frustrated. And, you know, I'd be asking my mum, what, what can I eat? What can I train? You know, what can I do to get better? Even at like five, six years of age. So fast forward to sort of 10 years old. And I far surpassed my brothers in swimming. You know, I'm way, way better than my brothers. And I start entering what they call the nationals. So the, the, the national national championship. So the whole country gets together and we find out who is the best swimmer in the country. And at age 10, I won the national championships. So I was the best swimmer in the country for my age, for freestyle, from 50 meters all the way up to 1500 meters. So I think there's loads of disciplines. There's like 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, and then 1500 meters. And I won everything. So even for everywhere from a sprint to a longer distance. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. At 10, at 10 years old? Yes. And I did wow. that up until I was 13. I continued to win. You know, I got a few seconds and thirds along the way, obviously, but yeah. I continued to win the 50 meters all the way up to the 1500 meters. So would you, when you did those races, now, is there, how much of a break is there between? Because I'm assuming everybody doesn't enter all of those. The national championships, championships are usually over, from memory, they're usually over like three days. So okay. it'd be like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Is that normal? Is that normal to enter all of them? No. Okay, I was going to say, that's no, not. Because you probably train and say, go, all right, I'm going to go enter and I'm just going to do the 50 and 100 or something. Exactly, you know? yeah. So exactly that. So, you know, some people will specialize in a 50-meter sprint or a 200-meter or some people are better at 400, whereas I was just good at all of it. So you just, just enter all of it. Yeah, so I entered all <laughs> of it and, and won pretty much, you know, I won 90% of it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and one year I won, I won everything. You know, I won the 50, the 100, the 200, the 400, the 1500. And I got entered onto what they called the world-class potential squad, which was basically the junior junior Olympic team for Great Britain. And this is at like around 13, 12, 12, 12 years of age. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I was training 20 hours a week at that point. I was getting up at five in the morning, cycling down to my local swimming pool, doing a two-hour training session, cycling home, then cycling to school, doing a day of school, and then straight after school, I'd str- cycle straight back to the swimming baths and do another two-hour training session. And that was pretty much every day, you know, yeah. swimming twice a day every day at, at 12 years of age. That's crazy. Where, let me ask you this question, and, and this is something that people have asked me too, because I had an older brother that I was always trying to keep up with, mm-hmm. and he, it would infuriate me, like you're saying. And I, I can we've talked about this before, but just in, uh, enrage me that I couldn't beat him or he would beat me or whatever. And I'd come back and then I'd go practice and I would do the same things. I just, I wanted to win. And then eventually I surpassed him, um, 
by working hard and, and, and training. But where do you think that competitive drive came from? Do you, do you think it, it was something that you were born with where it just was there? Or do you think it was something that happened with your brothers or, or something else? Like where, where did that type of drive? Because obviously at a younger age like that, that's not normal. Mm. You know, most, most kids are not, Hey, I'm going to get up and go do that at that time in the morning. And I was like that, but it's a, just a question I want to pose to you because you went through it as well. Right. Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's not really a single answer for that. Um, I mean, now I'm growing up and I've got, you know, a son of my own yeah. and he's got a lot of, I mean, they call them disabilities, but I don't, you know, he's got ADHD, he's got dyspraxia, he's got dyslexia, he's got all sorts. And I suppose the worst one is the ADHD, where they're just hyperactive. You know, he's always bouncing about, always fidgeting, just playing his computer, he's playing, you know, he's jumping off just and down. Just needs to move. Just can't keep still. He's always yeah. like, tick, they call it ticking. Okay. You know, he's just always moving to sort of stimulate himself. Yeah. And you read up on it, and the only cure for it, really, I mean, obviously they do medication, but the best cure for it is exercise, because it expels all that energy, it expels all those ticks. And that in itself is a cure for ADHD. Now, when I sort of look back and talk to my parents, I was definitely a victim of that. I definitely had ADHD. Now, do you think that that's why you struggled in school a little bit more? Because they were trying to tell you to sit there and pay attention and that now, type of thing. And again, there's two answers to that. Because you could say I struggled in school, but also I, I excelled at school. Was it easy for you? Learning was easy. Okay. But so be, you know, behaving wasn't okay so you you could pick things up really quickly oh yeah and so you were almost excelling quicker at that but you because of that you had a hard time behaving yes because it was too maybe it was too easy you needed to be stimulated more i, I mean I, I, and i'm not lying when i say this you know i was genuinely always the top set in in the maths the english the science anything that i was interested in i would excel at you know i'd always be in the top sets and i think where i struggled was you're probably right. You know, I probably found it so easy that once I did my work, I'd just mess about and become the class clown. And, you know, yeah. and that's, that's, that's where I found school hard. It was, I was always, always punished and, you know, put in detention and suspended and then eventually expelled. And it was frustrating for me because no one, no one, like back then ADHD wasn't a thing. Sure. You know, nobody was really identifying that. No. Yeah. No, so there wasn't there wasn't any sort of uh, help for that, you know, for someone in my, you know, there was no. So you, your grades weren't bad. No, that's just cr- just just my behavior. See, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy that you couldn't look at that and say, "Hey, Eddie's excelling here." Mm. Maybe instead of you know saying, "Hey, sit there, you got your work done, just be quiet." Now we're going to give you something to excel a little bit more and challenge you a little bit more. Yeah. Like if you would have had a teacher that did that and and kind of identified like you know, maybe you need to be pushed a little bit more, right? Yeah. Instead of disciplined for doing well. Cause it's, it's kind of a negative feedback in a way. Right. And you're, you're, I, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's an interesting question. Yeah. But do you think that going back to the competitiveness, like what's, what's your answer with that? Cause you, like you're saying with max, like you're seeing these things, but I mean, did you gravitate towards having that exercise as an outlet? So, and so- then that, then, kind of bred the competitiveness yeah so I, I i genuinely believe i mean obviously the brothers was a factor you know having been competitive with my brothers yeah but now i'm an adult and i've got a child of my own who, with the same condition yeah i genuinely believe it's with adhd you 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 fight you have to find that void filler you know like my son has to i train with my son every day now and i can see the improvement in him in That's this amazing. in this last three or four months the difference is insane just because i'm getting to do something a little bit every day and he's he's 10 now he's 10 yeah 10 and I, I think, unbeknown to me and the family, we were actually curing the ADHD with me going to swimming. That's because so, you, you obviously said you started at five. Yeah, so right? we, so we, it's a so, young enough age yeah. where you're you're jumping in and doing that. So we were accidentally curing. You know, we we were filling that void by accident by making me do the swimming, and I think it was the ADHD that got me so obsessive with it. You know, I had to be the best, and I just had so much energy. I used to go training. I used to find it so easy. Yeah, because I had so much energy to get rid of, 
So I would swim twice as hard and twice as long and twice, you know, just. So you would kind of fixate on that. Yeah. And and so, so in a way, I guess you're answering it and saying it's something you kind of were born with in a way. And then through that exercise outlet of swimming, then you needed to be the best. I think that is, I think looking back now, as I say, with a kid of me, and I think that yeah. is pretty much a bang on assessment. Interesting. Was, was the, the the ADHD was my was my reason? You know, I was born with it. Yeah, something you can't help. It's whatever it is. It's a damage to the brain, a chemical imbalance. I still, nobody knows what causes it. You know, yeah. But, yeah. but it happens. But you felt better when you would have an outlet with with exercise. I always, I, I mean, I, and again, when I was a kid, you don't really understand it. But now, as an adult, looking back, I'd always go to a swimming session and I'd come out feeling great. You know, like focused and, and it, it would bring me back down to earth and I can go home and be calm and, you know, and I could go to sleep. Whereas, you know, I, I, and now looking back, the days that I didn't do my exercise are probably the days where I did extra misbehave and bounce off the walls and wind my brothers up and didn't sleep very well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think definitely the ADHD, the ADHD was something that was a huge factor for me and it made me obsessive and probably and that carried on into my adulthood with with strongman and bodybuilding and whatever else and yeah you know, that obsessiveness of having to expel the energy definitely continued into my adulthood yeah even so you, now you found another way to let it out so at yeah. 13 you get selected for this squad that that essentially is kind of like you said like a junior olympic yeah type team which what what was that like for you, I mean, did you feel good about that? Was it different? I mean, did you have to go train somewhere different or continue where you were at? Yeah, I mean, if I'm being brutally honest, I hated it. I hated it because I had a good thing. You know, I had a good thing where I enjoyed my training. I enjoyed going to my swimming sessions. I enjoyed my relationship with my coach and my teammates. And then when this Olympic team program came along, it, it just took a different direction. You know, my coach got suckered into this Olympic format of you've got to do more more lengths. You've got to do X amount of kilometers per session. But you, you were already excelling. Yeah. Interesting. So th this program implemented that you've got to do 20K of swimming a week. And if you don't do it, then, you know, you can't be a part of the program and you don't get your funding. So my, my coach got suckered into that and made me, you know, completely change my training. It went from being enjoyable to being military. You know, it went from doing like, he was a good coach. Yeah. He had trained Olympic athletes. And for whatever reason, he got suckered into this program and he just completely changed his ways. And I started to hate it. And I could see my times just very gradually getting slower and slower and slower. And I started to like resent my coach. You know, I used to, mm. used to hate him by the end of it. Like, why, why am I doing this? Why have you changed things? He used to say, you know, it's not broke. Why fix it? Yeah. But he, could, he couldn't. He was just so focused on this Olympic program that he just didn't see what was going wrong before his eyes. Yeah. Um, and that that's where I fell out of love with swimming, really. And that's when... How long did that take? I would say the space of a year. So over a year, just yeah. implementing the new training. And I, well, I mean, I can imagine the competitiveness that you had. If you saw your times going backwards, you're not enjoying the training. Yeah. You're Now you're disagreeing with it. That would eat me alive. Yeah. Right. Like, And I'm sure that it, it did, obviously, with you, too. Yeah. So your coach, it's 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 crazy. It'd be like somebody going in and training now, right, and saying they're training, they're they're following a certain program, whatever it might be, and they're they're getting results, right? And they and even though they're progressing, they want they want to change, or somebody tells them to change yeah. to something completely new. Yeah. And it's like if if you're getting results and you're moving forward, why would you change? Yeah, right. It's that, it's crazy, and that's what happened. And I remember I say it went on for the best part of a year, and. I started sort of like just pissing about my training then because I hated it. I hate doing these extra lengths. So I'd st like stop and have an extra, have a, you know, a bit more time having me drink or whatever. Yeah. Chatting to a teammate, just pissing about more. And my coach kept drilling me. Come on, we've got to get these lengths in. We've got to get this. We haven't done your 20K this week. And it was just constant. And I remember one day, I said, I was only a young kid. And he just kept coming at me. And I went, you know what, mate? Go fuck yourself. I'm fucking sick of this. Yeah. And I just got out, walked out, and I never came back to swimming. That's great. And so when was that? Around 14? That was, a, that was about 13. 13. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. that's crazy. Something you had done for so long and, and really loved. Yeah. And and just that change 
changed it that much. Yeah. So that was that was where you were done with swimming then. That was it. Yeah. So what it. what happened at that point? So at that point, I mean, I changed swimming clubs. I went to a different club, and you know, the coach was great. He was a, a really nice guy, but he just wasn't. Maybe he was, but I, I just couldn't get my rhythm again. Okay. You know, I couldn't get back to the the way I felt when I was under my old coach. I couldn't get back to the times. I couldn't get back to enjoying the training. So I just continued to sort of dragging along, you know, not really, not really enjoying it. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, the times just got, well, I, don't get me wrong, I still competed at the nationals. Just, you know, those first place turned to second and to first and to fifths and it just got worse and worse. And, that, and then that hits you hard, you know, after a few years of winning everything and then you're coming back and you're losing. As you know, losing for people like us is not a nice feeling. No, no, yeah, that's... That's chal- I mean, it's it's a huge challenge, man. I can I can understand where you were, right? Because you probably at that point were getting beat by people that you had beat before, and you you saw as not as good as you, right? Yep. At that point, and, and especially if running in that in that circle, it's probably a lot of similar faces that you saw, you know, before. Yeah. And and you you knew your abilities and had already proven them, and so now you're coming back and and so it's 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 a it sounds like this downward spiral that started right and 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 you know a spiral of kind of resentment and and frustration and then you know just anger yeah. right because it's, it's like why is this falling apart when this is such a good thing for you it was uh it was a massive trigger in my life really because as i say it was my outlet for for my mental health in essence it was yeah. it was a, a cure for my adhd yeah and when that was sort of taken away, when I stopped enjoying my training and started putting all of my energy into training, that's when problems really start to arise, you know, lashing out, be more violent, drink drugs, you know, getting in trouble at school, being the class clown. Yeah. Uh, and loads of factors on the back of that, literally that, that year following that sort of, you know, quitting the swimming or qu- under that coach, just things got horrendous. You know, I was expelled from school. So I was, ch- I was, Chucked out of school, so I wasn't allowed to, uh, you know, have an education. Um, or like, and I mean this like with sincerity. I was in prison probably every other weekend, like fighting or doing something I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, my nan was diagnosed with cancer all around the same time. I got a girl pregnant. Wow. Um, yeah, and I think just all these factors just all melted together in one scenario. And I just imploded, man. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's, yeah it was well, it's a, a lot to handle, especially at that age, you know, because as a, uh, you know, as a male at that type of age, you know, 13, 14, there's a lot of changes going on anyway, yeah. right? And you're, and you're, you're trying to figure out your path and, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, boys at that age, you're already trying to build confidence, right? And, and now you've got this other factor where something that was so stable for you falls apart. Then you've got these other life factors that are now, it's it's just a, um, a kind of a negative cascade, right? That just keeps coming, oh, it was which one, is bad. It was one thing after the other. I mean, obviously I, I was excelling at school. You know, even though I was I was the class clown and misbehaving, you know, yeah. I was top of the class in maths and English. And I even, uh, even though I was expelled, so I was home tutored. I had to have a teacher come up to my house and, and sort of go through the lessons with me in yeah. the end. And I, I actually still went back and I, I, I think I got seven in, in the UK. We have what we call GCSEs, and I believe that I got seven GCSEs. Some of them like A grades, like A's the best and sort of like F's the worst. Yeah, I've, I got seven A to C grades. So wow. and so you're still doing fine, <laughs> mate. Really, I, I, I remember going to pick up my grades from school and talking to my mates, and no one had got any grades. Wow, no one. Like everyone had fucking failed. Like That's the, crazy. Of course, there were some people, you know, obviously not in my circle, but yeah, in my circle, none of my mates had any grades. They, they just all, all, all just fucking fucked. Yeah, and I was there, like I, I did fucking astonishing. Yeah, comparatively, that, with being expelled. Yeah, That's insane. Yeah, I wasn't at yeah. school for the last two years, and I did better than all my all my peers. You know. Yeah. So um, obviously, this is you know looking back, I think it's it, you like you're saying it's more clear what was going on. Yeah. And 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 there's there's obviously a, a factor there, 
for what was happening, right? Yeah. So it's it's um, you know, but you're I'm sure at that time getting labeled as the the troublemaker, the bad kid, like you're not doing well, you're you're not behaving all this, right? So Yeah. So I, and I guess at that age there's a lot of pressure on you because you know that you've got to get those grades you've got to get into college mm -hmm. otherwise you're not going to get a job and you're going to fail and and that's all you were told you yes. know that's all that was told to me like you're yeah. going to fail every time i was misbehaving in class get out you're going to fail in life yeah you know you're expelled good luck you're going to fail yeah. it was just constant like you, there's so much pressure on you to do good in life that when you do actually get put in that position where you are expelled and all these things that the teachers have been saying for the few, last year or so are coming true. Like you're going to get expelled, you're not going to learn anything, you're going to end up, you know, with a shit job and all yeah. that. So yeah, that was a tough time, and I actually went through a stage of of really bad depression and anxiety. Yeah, and no it's tough it's and i know i know what you're going to talk about so it's 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 not easy uh to have these things happen and um you know i've i've uh you know the, these moments in life right like like they ultimately i think they made you better right and i think that that's that hopefully the takeaway but i'll let you yeah. run with it man i mean so as a 13-year-old kid being prescribed Prozacs, which is like an antidepressant, and you're, you're seeing a psychiatrist. So whilst all my mates are at school learning the GCSEs and having fun, you know, I was sat in front of a you know, psychiatrist trying to get my life back together. It's hard to talk about because it was... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> No, it's it was a real it was a really dark time of my life. Yeah, really bad. Yep. And then I suppose uh, sorry. Don't be sorry, man. The, you the, the thing about this, Ed, is is honestly this is gonna it's gonna help so many people that listen to this, it's gonna help them out, right? Because the the fact of the matter is you went through all of this and look at what you've become, right? Look at how many people look up to you for these things right so i've talked yeah. i've talked about going through dark times here and you have in a lot of ways you have to hit that rock bottom at some points and it's rock bottom for some people is different than rock bottom for other people yeah. but you know the 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 fact that you are sharing this and and um you know showing the emotion is real bro like it's not it's not anything other than real so you know i i um I you guess, know, yeah. I guess it was a wake up call, you know, because just those two years was so so miserable. Just like locked in my room on my own, just like literally having the thoughts I wanted to kill myself on a daily basis. Yeah. <clears throat> and then fast forward to about, I would say, fifteen years of age, and. Uh, it was my mum that said to me, like, just sat me down one day, and I think you could see from the outside, you know, everything around, everything, every, every, all the eyes from the outside could just see it was imploding. Yeah. And my mum sort of sat me down and was like, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, you cannot continue the way you are. You can't stay in your room all day. You can't not go to school. You can't not get a job. You've got to get up and get on with your life. And... For whatever conclusion we came to, we decided I was going to join the gym. So instead of being home all day, wanking and playing the PlayStation, whatever else, <laughs> join the gym. So my yeah. mom paid for a membership for me to join a gym. And even though I was only sort of, you know, late 14, 15 years of age, I, when my mates were at school, I was going to the gym and I was lifting weights. And I was hanging around with guys that took me under their wing very quickly. You know, guys in the 50s, 60s, even 70s, you know, old guys that have been bodybuilding and powerlifting for 40, 50 years. Yeah. And that was where my life got back on track, was when I started to go to the gym and do a two-hour workout and come out and get that feeling of, of self-worth, of that feeling of euphoria. And I guess that's when it, and again, I didn't really click at the time, but looking back now, 
it's like I said to you, so the cure for ADHD was exercise. So you think for that two years when I was on Prozac and, and seeing a psychiatrist, I didn't do any exercise. Yep. You know, I was just fucked. I, my head was a mess. Sure. And that made it worse. I was like, I was, I was, I was deleting that void filler. There, yep. the exercise. Mm. So I suppose when I started going to the gym again, that void filler started up again. Yep. And I started filling that void with exercise. And every time I exercised, I came out feeling a bit better. And literally within, I, I'm going to say within 12 months, I was pretty much back on life, you know, back on the mend. So at fif- 15, that that door opened, mm. right? And, and uh, you know, I, I, can only, I can only imagine that feeling because I, I know what it was like for me when I first went in and, and actually started lifting weights mm. and how, how addicting it was, but also how satisfying it was, right? So you could go in, you could work hard, you would get better, you would feel better. And then, you know, especially, especially for, uh, at that age, like, like I was talking about before, like a young man at that age going through what they're going through, my confidence went up massively. Right. So for you, after all of this crap that you had to go through, right. And being at that such of a low point where looking back, like I can, bro, I, I can't even imagine honestly, like what that was like for you to sit in that room and be, and feel the way you do when, it wasn't, it wasn't really your fault, right? Like you needed something to have that. And so yeah. you had something that was so good. Cause I can only imagine if your programming hadn't changed with swimming and that would have stuck with you, yeah. that probably in all fairness, it may not have happened. Yeah. Right. It might not have. Yeah. So like to go through it and then find the gym is, is exciting. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's crazy how that filled that void for you. Yeah. And ultimately that, that, you know, they say everything happens for a reason. I am a, I am a big believer in that, you know. Had I con- continued with the, the swimming career, would I have gone on and won gold medals at the Olympics? Probably. And but, that, that's crazy to say, but, you know, you were on that track. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, you look at what life I've had doing on this route of lifting weights, and, you know, I've, I've, I've had pals that have gone on and been, been successful in swimming. And when they retire... 90% of them have to go back to, to work normal jobs. Yeah. And that's the truth of it, you know. it's In the UK, you can win a gold medal and you get a clap and you get an MBE and you get a gold medal. But no one gives a shit. Yeah. You know, then no one's going to pay your mortgage for you and pay your bills and, and whatever else. So yeah. I think going down the weightlifting route for me was such a life, life-changing life experience in terms of, of life lessons as well because... As I say, whilst my pals were at school, stu- you know, studying for the GCSEs, I was I was at the gym lifting weights, hanging around with these older men, and then we'd hang around after, you know, in the sauna, in the jacuzzi, and and just talk. And at that age, you absorb you absorb all the information that's said to you, you know. When we talk about wives, about relationships, about jobs, about pensions, about where to put your money, you yeah. know, about property, and it was these men that instilled in me that when you're older. Don't put money into a pension. That that, that you were throwing, you might as well rip your money up and put it in the fucking bin. These guys are telling me, as soon as you can, put your money into a house. You know, as soon as you turn sixteen, don't fuck about. Don't go to college. Don't go to uni. Get into a job. Start start earning cash. Start getting going with life. And whether that's good or good advice or or not, it's good advice for some people. It's good bad advice for others. But for me, I think it was good advice. And. At 16, you know, I continue the weight training with these, with these guys all through that. And at 16, I get, you know, I get a job as a mechanic, as an, an apprenticeship. And I'm on good money. You know, it, it's, it paid well. 17, I start working security on the, on the doors, on the nightclubs and on the pubs. And, and then at 18, you know, I'm, I'm sort of that successful. At 18, I bought my first house. That's awesome. When I was 18. I then set up my own door business. So I ended up running quite a bit of the security in Stoke-on-Trent. You know, I, I had people working under me, yeah. you know, 18 years of age. Uh, 19, I bought my second house, you know? And I think, like, me being expelled from school, although it's not, I'm not proud of it. And, of course, you know, I sort of empower everyone to stay in school and, and you know, be good and, and learn and, you know, do good things in life but for me it was the best thing that ever happened to me yeah. being expelled from school put me under these 
these gentlemen's wings and they, you know, they taught me how to lift weights. They taught me how to build my body and they taught me also, you know, how to, where to put your money. They taught me about how to, you know, how to treat your wife, how to treat your kids and, and that they were life lessons, you know? Yeah. Well, you're learning. I mean, I can only imagine, man, the conversations, uh, you know, at gym, you know, that, that setting, right? Because these guys, you know, especially if that it, they're at that age where it's, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old, they've seen life, a lot of it, yeah. right? And they know a lot and they've gone through a lot and they probably have learned the hard way with a lot of different things, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, it says a lot of thinking even at that age to be training. Still, you see a young kid, you're naturally going to want to help him, especially somebody like you because I guarantee when you walked in there, you wanted to learn, yeah, right? Like you, you were active, and they probably saw that initially in you when you walked in the door, and they're like, "Hey, this kid's got some fire. This kid, you know, wants to learn and get better." And you know, you're probably setting up, and then you have one guy come over, and hey, this is how you do this. Why don't, and then you come back the next day, you come back, you know, yeah. and it just turns into something where I can only imagine for them because I would feel that same way if I saw a young kid working hard, really wanting to learn. Yeah, I would want to help out the ma- the most that i could right and yeah it's neat that you were able to translate that into success at a young age mm-hmm. even with what you had gone through right because that's that's not normal buying a house at 18 is not normal having a business like that not normal at 18 yeah. you know so you had a a plethora i'm going to use that word plethora of life experience mm-hmm. already because of who you were around and what you had gone through yeah, no, definitely. I was very, very unlucky, but very lucky at the same time. Very blessed to have gone down that route, that direction. Yep. And as I say, like you say, that you know, walking to that gym and ha- not having a clue what to do. You know, going in and doing just doing biceps and triceps. And I never forget, I was doing some bicep curls sitting down. Yeah, and a guy come over to me. We used to, we used, to, used to call him Big Dave, like. Like you do in the gym, you know, everyone, oh, yeah, everyone's, yeah, yeah. everyone's big Tom and big Dave and you know, yeah. and uh, big Dave come up, come over to me, never met before. He's like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you not going to fucking get big doing that? Come here, come train with me. Yeah. And that was it. You know, I started training with these two blokes and then before I know it, I've got a training partner, you know, yeah. he's like 40 years older than me. And yeah, they, I mean, very blessed in that, in that, you know, I was taught how to build the body properly from a very early age, you know, from 15, let's train calves, let's train legs, let's train hamstrings, quads, shoulders, biceps, triceps. So essentially I I was training to be a a bodybuilder really. And that, that's how I sort of saw my career. Obviously I was always a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger throughout my whole childhood as well. So when I started building my body and, you know, at 16, I was, I was 16 stone. So, um, about 100 and, about 108 110 kilo at 16 years so of like age 240 pounds yeah roughly. 240 pounds at 16 yeah. and i was ripped you know i was still uh, you know i was still fit from my swimming i still did my swimming i just didn't do it competitive competitively so you still enjoyed doing that a little bit on your own on my own yeah under okay. my new coach but okay the pressure was off okay you know I, there's no i was no in, not inspired to be an olympic gold medalist because i just fell out out of love with the sport but i still did it so, you know, I was 240 pounds and probably no joke when I say this, probably about 10% body fat. That's, I mean, that's impressive at 16, yeah. for sure. I was big. So like, were, 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 did you find that when you walked in the gym with these guys, were you naturally strong? Just he, like yes. walking in there, once you learn the movements, of course. Yeah. It was just kind of like, all right, this is coming very easy to me. Yeah, so I remember at 17, I... I'm sure I bench pressed 180 kilos at 17 years of age. So that's about 400 pounds. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. Um, you know, deadlifting, sort of five, six plates aside. Um, at 17 or 18, like that. that yeah. age. That's awesome. No, no, 16. 16. Yeah, yeah, 16, 16. 17 is when, 17 is when, like, the guys around me are like, right, we're going to start testing you now. Like, what's your max bench? What's your max deadlift? What's your max okay. squat? You know, and I was, you know, deadlifting squats like five, six plates aside, benching four plates aside, dead easy. Yeah, and it just progressed. You know, it just became obsessive, as you know. When yeah, you start, oh yeah. when you yeah. start seeing those figures, like, like, and you see people around you watching you, like, Jesus Christ, he's benching four plates aside. He's yeah. a kid. Well, I mean, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So that progressed very, very quickly, and I think by the age of nineteen, 
I was by far the strongest guy in the gym by miles. And then I'm getting whispers in my ear, you know, on YouTube and on social media. Have you seen this on Will's Strongest Man? You can do that. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I fucking can. Yeah, I can lift that kind of weight. But you had watched, now talking about strongman, I'm, I'm assuming be, being in the UK, you had watched World's Strongest Man, like growing up. Of course, up. yeah. Is this like a holiday tradition, like a Christmas tradition? Every single Christmas, you'd sit around the TV and watch the World's Strongest Man as a family. It was like the thing to do. Yeah. And still is. So, I mean, that, uh, did you have any, any guys from World's Strongest Man that you kind of gravitate toward watching? Or was it, was it like Jeff Capes or... Being Hon- from the UK. I mean, honestly, I think, obviously, Marius Podnoksky. But I remember 16, 17, watching Terry Hollands. Okay. And, you know, he was never the best. But, you know, just see, he was such a huge man. Yeah. You know, I, I remember him being, because on, on TV, you, turn, you, you talk stone. So he was like 30 stone, which is unheard of. Yeah. You know, he was like a 400-pound man. Yeah. So this, this would have been around what year then? Watching Terry, oh. like 2000. Five, six, 2005 and six, yeah, okay. something okay. around that, yeah. Okay. Um, and for me, like watching Terry on TV was very inspiring, you know. And, and I think it was actually Terry Allen's that actually made me think I, I could do I, it. I could fucking go and do that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so, so you, people are whispering in your ear. You've been watching it. Now you're start, you're starting to kind of all right. Here I'm this big. I'm this strong. Like this is something that might be kind of fun to get into. Yeah. And then it was actually my middle brother James who found me a contest up in just above Manchester and entered me into it, just, you know, without, without really asking me and just entered me into it. it was, right, I've entered into a strongman contest. Let's go see how, how strong you really are. Okay. And at 19, I did this contest. I had 40 men. I'm going to say men because they were a lot older and bigger than me. And I came fifth. out of and then f- At your re- first one? Very first competition. Any event training? None. None. Never pulled a truck, never okay. lifted an outstone, never lifted a log. So you're just going in raw. Never flipped to tie. Green, nothing. Very green. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I came fifth. And that's when I got the, the bike for it. And it was that day. Um, I looked back on my Facebook, on my personal Facebook page. I said that day I was going to win the World's Strongest Man. Day of your first contest. The day of my first contest. Like when the contest was over or after? Yeah. So you were hooked, after. hooked that much? Straight after, I was hooked. I okay. was telling my family, my friends, put it on my social media, I'm going to win the World's Strongest Man Day one day. Watch this space. That's bold, man. After your first, first contest. Yeah. I mean, it's, but obviously you loved it that much. I did. Yeah. You know, it was, it was just, I, I, it, it was a thrill, you know, putting mm. all that hard work into action was just an amazing feeling for me. As I say, that, 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 that feeling of euphoria, that reward was so good for me. And then yeah. it, you come back from that competition, and of course, training takes a step up. Yeah, and that's where it kind of started. Yeah, that's 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 awesome, man. I mean, it's it's uh, interesting uh, to me because I did my first contest without any equipment or touching anything, and, and it was very much the same thing. Yeah, it was like, all right, we're gonna figure this out. We had to pull a tractor in my first contest. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, <laughs> like that was probably the worst pull ever. You know, but you you figure it out, you know, and then then you come back and you get better. And, exactly. And especially when you have that type of incentive in a way, or or you're excited, right? Like you're yeah, you're yeah. like, all right, I love this. I'm already lifting. You know, it sounds like you were just lifting to get stronger. That, right? that was I mean, it. You weren't really yeah. doing anything else. I mean, to be honest, up until that point, I was just lifting to for bodybuilding. Just to try to look better. Yeah, I wanted to do because you did. I mean, if you look at early pictures of you. Because, I mean, coming in, even even when you're doing more strong, man, you were pretty lean. Oh, yeah. Like, your body type was more of a, quote-unquote, bodybuilder type of build yeah. coming into strong, man, right? So, it was, um, you, it's apparent that that's what you were training for. Yeah. No, definitely. I'd say, I, I, I mean, I remember my, work, my first Will Strongest Man was back in 2012, and I, mm-hmm. I, I was pretty chiseled. Yeah. You know, sort of like Marius, that's, not that's quite Marius first, Podnotsky, but... Yeah. Well, the first time I met you, I'll tell this story. Go right? on, man. Yep. <laughs> so, Eddie Hall, 2012 World's Strongest Man, right? I don't know why you decided to wear the shorts that you did, uh-huh. but they were these, like, tiny little... I don't even know what you call them. Like, like running, run, running, running shorts. shorts. Yeah, yeah. And you would walk around with no shirt on yep. and these stupid little shorts, and I was just like, who is this kid walking in here thinking he's he's hot shit you know like and that's that's how you came across right yeah you know very arrogant you walked in um 
what was that like for you going to World's Strongest Man, like first time? Because that was LA, right? Yeah, so LA. LA. So, yeah. so you got to you got to think that for me, and how much did you weigh? How much did you weigh? Twenty four stone. So, um, work that out quickly. We're gonna, we're gonna do some math right during the. So, I would guess that you were 100 hundred and fifty kilo. So three hundred thirty pounds, thereabouts. Yeah. Okay. And I was twenty four years old. Okay. So, so for me, you've got to you've got to think about my journey. So two thousand and uh, two thousand and seven. Okay. Yeah, 2007 was my very first strongman. So that contest. was because you said 19, and then at 24 yeah. you made it to Worlds. Yes. So those those five years, what were those like? Great. I pretty much won everything. Built, just crushing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you know, a bit bit of a hesitant start, but I would say from 2010, every single competition I entered, I didn't lose. Yeah. You know, I won. So, I won England's. I went to UK's. I won the UK's. I did that for two years in a row, and yeah. then. I walked into Will's Strongest Man, and I, you know, I thought it was the bee's knees. I thought, right. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably. Well, you walked in there acting like you were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, was, that was my persona. It was. You know? It was. I, yeah. I'm a lot different now. You know, obviously, I, I think at the time it paid off. You yeah. know, I was very arrogant, very boisterous. You know, I would, I would say, you know, I'd, I'd walk up to people, "Hey, mate, I'm Eddie. You're right. Yeah, I'm gonna kick your ass." Yeah. Just so boisterous about it. Didn't really yeah. care what people thought and it worked you know it yep. got in people's heads in my opinion you know it was like a persona that worked it's sort of like the bad bad the bad guy from gladiator sort of thing yeah you know yeah, yeah. and it, it built that brand up you know yeah. love me or hate me everyone watch me sure and that, sure, that's sure. how i felt you know my social media i just got that feeling i was doing the right thing yeah um so yeah 2012 i, I guess i walked in and i genuinely believed that I was going to win. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to win the World's Strongest Man in 2012. And by fuck, you know, I went away with my, my dick between my legs. <laughs> Definitely. I felt, like, I, felt like a, I felt like a little girl. Yeah. When right. I saw the likes of you, I never... The, when I, so I walked into the hotel in LA. Yeah. It was at that casino. Yeah, that's right. That, and uh, I walked into the hotel design, and yeah. you were the first person I bumped into. In the lobby? Yeah. Yeah? You were the first person. That's and, crazy. And I remember looking you up and down and my mum and dad were there and I was just like, Fucking hell. <laughs> just like, fuck. Look at the size of this fucking guy. Yeah. And I, you know, I said hello, introduced myself. Yeah. I don't think you said you were going to kick my ass. I don't, I don't remember that part. Not to you, but yeah, other yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah, other yeah. people, okay. Other people, yeah. you, maybe, maybe the guys that were in your group or something. Yes, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... No, it's good, man. I mean, you, um, you came in, uh, you know, kind of full of piss and vinegar. You know, like that was, that was how I kind of thought. And, you know, it's... it's uh, but do you know that... Up until that point, so 24, yeah, I had not trained any strongman. So the only training I'd done was competitions. So that was your training? That was my training. Did your gym not have anything? Nothing. I trained in a commercial gym, like Planet Fitness. Yeah. I trained like in a gym like that up until so I was 24. So even, even going to World's Strongest Man, you didn't use equipment? None. That's ridiculous. Never trained. Yeah. And I won some events. I won the static. So I won the Viking Press okay. and I won the squat. Yeah, and then, when you're pressing, I feel like that's such a natural thing for you. Yeah, it was such a good thing. Always bench, obviously. If you're benching at, at 400 pounds at 16, yeah, just you know, the, the it, fundamentals were there. You know, absolutely, strong. absolutely. Um, yeah. But when it came to the moving stuff, like the yokes and oh, the pulling the trucks, I was terrible. Well, especially at that type of weight, right? You can get a. I feel like maybe you can get away with it if the weights are a little bit lighter. But once they get heavier, if you're not training with the equipment, you're somebody that's trained on equipment is going to be so much better yeah you're pissing in the wind yes yeah, literally yeah. That's the, so did you go back from that contest then and start training with equipment or how did that look yeah that's when the that's when i sort of believe because i i did I, you waver did you waver in your thought let me ask that question because you up until that point it sounds like you've had a lot of success yeah right going in and it's like all right i'm stronger i'm, I'm and you're a good athlete as well so you're coming in your strength is high you're a good athlete so you can you can kind of right on that so yeah. to speak like through that and then you get to world's strongest man did you walk away from world's strongest man the first year what was your confidence like i mean did did, did, did it waver your confidence at all or did, or did you say like all right i've got to i got to step my game up here or how i mean how did that look for you because I, I know how i felt but i think it gave me a lot more confidence because i knew i hadn't done any strongman training yeah and i knew you know i wasn't the right age yeah, to be when you know to be at the peak in terms of strength. Sure. So walking away, yeah, I, I you know I remember conversations with, with conversations with the family and, and friends, and you know I knew what I had to do. 
I knew I had to go back and work on my technique. What position are you finish in your group? I'm sure I came. Uh, it was it was what it was out of six back then. I think I came fifth. Okay. I think. So you didn't really it didn't really waver too much at all, if at all. No, no, not because at all. because because I won the events I won, I won across all the groups. Okay. Pretty much. So like the Viking press and the squat, I you know, comparing to the other groups, I was like up there. Definitely like top three. Gotcha. Out of all the guys. Sure. So that gave me the confidence. So like I knew I had the strength. So I just said to myself, like I know I've got the strength. I just gotta put it into action now. I've got to learn how to pull a truck. I've got yeah. to learn how to pick up a yoke. I've got to learn how to put put the Atlas stones on. Sure. Because I mean that that year at Will Strongest Man was probably the God's honest truth, probably the fourth or fifth time I'd ever done Atlas stones. Yeah. See, and that's it's not enough at that level. No. You know, I mean, so to go in that I mean, you were probably I would venture to guess in that in that lineup of competitors, you're probably the guy that had trained with equipment the least. Yeah, that's I would pr venture to say that's pretty much a given. Yeah, I think because if you're not training with any equipment whatsoever, yeah. not even touching it, like if you're only doing stones a few times, I mean, this is this is something that you, as you very well know, to get good at stones, you have to lift stones. Yes, if you want to be good at pulling a truck, you got to pull a truck. Yeah, right. So you can't just walk in and do it, especially mm -hmm. if the weights are heavy. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, if, if you're going to hook up to a truck and it's just going to roll, well, then anybody can do it. Yeah. But if, if you're having it really hard. You then know what? Back then, the Will's Strongest Man was a lot different. Yeah. It was, it was the point where people, nine times out of ten, wouldn't finish a truck pull. Yep. You know? A lot of times they wouldn't, sure. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's kind of changed a lot now. Yeah. You know, they sort of make it a bit more open for the lighter guys, so to say. Yeah. Which is... That's a whole different conversation, frustrating a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, we'll stay on you. We'll stay on you. Uh, yeah. So 2012 come back, you start training with some equipment, right? And I remember like, that's interesting that you say those things. Cause I remember my first year I had Pujanowski in my group, right? So 2008 and it, it was, uh, I beat him at, at some things yeah. in the group. And, and then I was comparing the same way you were comparing like, all right, where did I stack up in these things? Where did I fall down? And I came third in my group that year, right? right? So it was just there, top two go through to the finals, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I um, ironically enough, got got beat on the stones um, by Errol Haugen. I don't know if you remember him, but no. um, he was from Norway, incredible stone lifter, just super fast, especially with the weight of stones that we had to do then. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Like he, he literally jumped. Remember those, uh, the, the barrels, the platforms. Yeah. 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 He literally jumped on top of that when he loaded his stone. Only guy I've ever seen do that. Wow. So he jumped six foot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, he was literally stood on top of the, the last platform. Like it was good athlete. Yeah, that's power. Yeah. yeah really, yeah. really good athlete. Very explosive. But anyway, so I was that close, but I also did the same thing coming back. It's kind of like, all right, I did, I did good here. I won this event in the group. I did this, I did that. We can build on that. Right. And that's, it sounds like you're the same way. Like you can build on where you're at and, and your, your power was there. That was not a question. So, all right. So you go back 2012 going into 2013. Mm. How did that, how did that look? So 13 was actually quite a good year for me. Um, again, one UK's again, yeah, one England's. You were coming in. I feel, I feel like 13 more people definitely took notice yeah. of you that year. I yeah. would say so. That. Um, I think I was first reserve for the final. I just yep. I I fumbled barely. Yeah, barely I fumbled the stones yep. on, on the heat. I literally just fumbled the third stone, and that that screwed me over. Yeah. Um. So I was first reserve for the final, and I remember Colin saying, like, "Just stick around, Ed. Someone will pull out." But literally, the next day was UK strongest man. That's right. Back in the I UK, remember, we had a conversation about that, didn't we? And you left and won that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I left yep. and no one pulled out. Yeah. So I wouldn't have gotten to the final anyway. So I made the right decision. Yeah. And I, I flew, we're in Sanya, China, weren't we? Yes. So yes. I had to take four flights to get to Ireland. Wow. Four flights, 30, 30 hours of traveling. This is not a lie. 30 oh, hours. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. 30 hours of traveling. I landed in Ireland and they had to wait for me. To start the contest. To start the contest. I was half an hour late. And That's I, ridiculous. And I entered. That yeah. was a five-day contest and i won it that's amazing so you had just done all the qualifying at <laughs> at worlds and then flew yeah. back that long 
you, I can only imagine how you felt, but that's impressive. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was a good feeling because yeah. everybody, you know, I turned up and everybody was like, "You're tired, but you must be knackered." And I was, you know, like I was very arrogant. No, yeah. I'm, I'm fine, mate. You ready to get smashed up? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, but, and that, yeah, it was just that that sort of that's the arrogance I had, like, yeah. you know. And I believed I was going to win it before I even turned up. Yeah, you know? that, that's that's how I had to be, sort of thing. So that I mean, now I'm I'm imagining that drove you even more that you were that close to being in the final. Yeah, you know, and 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 it obviously made drastic improvements from 2012. Yeah. So during that forward. during that 12 to 13 is when I started doing event training. Uh, yeah. There was a um, a strong man called Dave Meir who had his own sort of you know strongman farm used to call it. I used to go down there every so often with some pals and uh, another strongman called the Ice Man. Uh, okay. Like an amateur strong man to train at his place, so very basic kit, you know, nothing yeah. fancy, but just you know, just to get hands on a yoke, Absolutely. on a log, you know, yep. something I never done before. Yeah, uh, and that just made the difference going into thirteen. As I had, I had the power, I knew I was strong. Sure, but you know, pulling the trucks, lifting out the stones, doing the log press, that all improved. It wasn't yep. that wasn't quite there yet, but it yep. all improved. Yeah. So fourteen, first year you make the final. Yeah. Right. That that was. That was a good year. I mean, uh, for you, and I feel like that's probably when you and I started talking a little bit more. Yeah. We we started hanging out. I remember ha spending some time. We actually um, were in a cold tub together. Yeah, I remember during, that during an earthquake. Yes, I remember. I remember, remember that. that? Yeah. I remember that because we were in a cold tub and we were taking the piss out of each other. Yeah, and then the whole cold tub started shaking like this, and I turned to you. I was like, Brian, stop fucking shaking the tub. <laughs> And then you looked at me and like, bro, it's an earthquake. And yeah. both of us just shot to a doorway and we're just like, please God, yeah, please what's God. happening? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember that. I remember that. That was that was good. Yeah. The, the <laughs> after the aftershocks were the weird part for me. Yeah. Because I remember I remember I went back up to my room and you think it's done. Yeah. And then it right? starts trembling. Yeah. And, and I was um I went back up to my room and I was on the toilet and everything started moving. I was like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was it was scary. That's the that first, first earthquake for me as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I mean, we don't get them here, so California. That's I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, it's nothing, you know. But for us, it's a it we felt, were, we, you know. I thought I was going to die. Yeah, yeah, with you in a cold tub. Yeah. Which, well, that would have been a good way to go, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lucky, couldn't lucky think of you. a better way. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> so 14, you're you're in the final, man. In the final, first yeah. time in the final. Uh, how did you feel there? I felt really good, yeah, and and again, I think the power movements. Um, you did well with the squat, yeah. I think I drew with Sadrunas, yeah, on the squat. Was it like fifteen reps or something? 40, you did great, fourteen, yeah, fourteen you, reps, I think, and it yeah. was heavier back then. Yeah, it was like three hundred and thirty kilos, which is what pound seven hundred pounds, like seven hundred fifty. Se yeah, seven twenty. They always kind of changed it around, but seven twenty to seven fifty, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think I remember that was the heaviest year the squat was the heaviest but they were very lenient with the heights oh, and they got it so wrong yeah they with did. some athletes yep, yep. well yeah. I, re I remember Sadrunas and i kind of getting into it over that you know because because he i thought he was a touch high and mm. he thought i was a touch high right and we're we're going back and forth and i remember i walked back and he said oh your squats were high and i said well i thought yours were high yeah right and it's it's not at the end of the day we're not the ones calling the height. Yeah. Right. So, but I remember there was a little bit of like back and forth there with him and I, yeah. um, and maybe even you and I talked about, it. I don't know a few of the guys were talking about it because it's everybody goes out and sets up. I, I remember very vividly of all, all those in the rule meeting. So we all go to the yard and yep. get familiarized with the kit. And there was a lot of like, you've got to wear the same shoes. You've yes. got to have it on the same place of your back, you've, yep. you know? Um, but yeah, I think, I think it was, you know, looking back now, it was a very piss poor job, yeah. to be honest. It yeah. was, none of it was fair. You know, there were definitely some people that were like, bloody hell, that wasn't as deep as it was in the yeah. heat, you know, as you change I mean, your shoes. And I, I mean, and I have to go back and watch the video because I've done so many squats there. But, you know, there's certain years where you, and, and a couple inches makes a big difference. Oh, huge. Massive difference, huge. right? Yeah. So if you get set real deep compared to yeah. somebody's an inch below or above parallel, yeah, your power is much better, yes. right? No, so, and, and, and especially with that setup, if you if you lean forward slightly, then you, that, your hips stay a little bit that higher. That was the problem: is people were leaning yeah, forward yeah. more, and they were just cheating the system. And well, and I and, and, and well, self, everyone did. Yeah. I think everyone did. Self admitted, man, I would go to that because that's where my strength was. Yeah, right. So you measure, and even though you're measuring, 
I always said it would be better with something like that to have your ass actually touch a, a mat or pad. Yeah. Because then you would actually have to take your hips down that low. Yes. That's versus true. getting into more of a, a little bit yeah. more of, I'm going to call it like a squat morning, right? Yeah, like yeah. Kind of like a yeah, hybrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a hybrid. You yeah. know, where you get tired and you lean over a little bit more. But technically, you're still touching the safeties. Yeah. So it keeps, anyway. Yeah, we could talk about that. Another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you crushed that event. Yeah, I think. What, what place did you end up? Were you around? Uh, sixth. Sixth. That's sixth. right. Yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, as I say, like the static stuff, I was right up there with you guys, like yeah. the log press and the and the squats and everything. And then, yeah, just the moving stuff again, just still not quite there. Yeah. Just still not, you know, not experienced enough. Yeah. And then fi I feel like 15 for you was kind of a breakout performance. Um, in a lot of ways. So 15 it Malaysia. Was. Yeah, you know. it was because the top three guys was always you, Sadrunus, and Thor. Yeah. It was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, yep. year after year for years. Yeah. And I, I remember I was like one or two points behind third place. I think, um, I, th th I think Thor was third that year, and I was just behind Thor. Mm -hmm. And I actually beat him on the Atlas Stones. You did, you and you I had was a great point, point one second behind you, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I gave you the tacky. So. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And sleeves, but yeah, you know. But well, yeah, that's when I saw you know the technique stuff really came on, like the Atlas yeah. Stones. You know, as I said, you, you had a great run of stones. Oh, it was, it was, it was great. Yeah, really. I said I was point one second behind you on the yeah. Atlas Stones. It was. I mean, you went out there and crushed that man. It was. It was a big, big moment. Like I feel yeah. like that was kind of the you putting your stake in the ground yeah right? that was like, the realization for a lot of people that yeah eddie's in contention of winning this now yep and yep. that the, that was the you know that was the wording around the athletes yep. when it, you know when you could come back after and yeah you know you, you'd won it obviously yeah um yeah so it, it, was, it was that was a good year for me because yep. again it just gave you that confidence you know you're capable yeah when you do performances like that yeah yeah you you and, and i think that confidence for you was apparent Right, like you, I think you saw, kind of saw it, or I kind of saw it with your training and your approach, and so many other things. Um, like conversation wise, I think me having conversations with you early on, and whether you realize this or not, like I, the way that you talk to me and would ask me questions about different stuff, like, uh, and this is early on too, not just at that point, but I could tell that your approach was different and that your mental game was different as well yeah right and 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 i guess i've maybe been around long enough to see guys come in and it's it's kind of like the first year i wasn't sure i wasn't sure with you because i'd seen other guys try to kind of yeah, put on yeah, that yeah. show be a little arrogant and you know look kind of more like like a bodybuilder type yeah, of yeah. build right and then they they magically just don't show up after about two years and then yes. you just you they're gone right yeah, but yeah, then yeah. you just kept coming back and getting better and and applying a different mental approach, right? And then you just kept excelling and 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 like you said, kind of planting that flag in the yeah. ground. So 16, 16 was more of a year where I was like, okay, this is gonna get interesting, I think, with with a lot of different things, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, going in and um, you know, this is uh the build up to that, I think was was fun. It was fun. Yeah, no, definitely. Like going I, think, in. I think fifteen was my realization that, you know. I can definitely win this and I should take this more seriously. Yeah. And that's the year I did the, in the March of 15, I got the world record deadlift. That's right. If you remember. Yep. In Australia, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. And you were with me at that yep. as well in Australia. Yep. You, you competed with me. Um, and I, I learned, I don't know if you remember this, but me and you had a lot of conversations and I learned a lot from you because in up to, up to that point, I was working a full-time job. You know, I was a mechanic. Yeah. I worked the mm -hmm. doors. You know, I was killing myself, working 100 hours a week. Yeah. And it was you that actually said to me one day, is like, if you're a part-time strong man, you're going to get part-time results. Yeah. And that's when it hit me. Is like, and I was looking at you, and you, that's all you did. You just did strong man. Yeah. And I, I thought, how? How yeah. can you How can you do that? Well, like, where do you get your money from? And then you're obviously building your brand, and you're, sure. you know, you're doing all your exposure and your socials, and you've got getting a good income. And I learned a lot from that, you know, mm -hmm. of, uh, to be professional is, yeah. is probably the more thing. Before that, you know, spending spending money on physiotherapy, you know, spending 40, 40, 40 pounds, $50 a week on physio for me was, was obscene. Yeah. But then I speak to you and you're spending $300 a week on physio. Yeah. And you're doing the hot cold and, you, yeah. you know, all the food. And I'm like, wow. And that's when it sort of clicked with me is, is it has to be an investment game. Yeah. 
Whereas you have to invest in your body. You have to invest in the in the good food. You have to invest in the good physios. You have to invest in the hot and cold treatments. And it was it was from you in 14, actually, I think talking to you in 14, that I went away and bought the hot and cold treatments, started having physio, you know, doing more stretching and all those sort of things, becoming more professional. And I think it was the end of 2014, I quit my job. Yeah. I, I, I packed my job in and I became a pro strongman. And I think, in all honesty, it's probably down to like watching you and how you did it yeah so that made me turn pro so obviously that turning pro was a ma- as you say part-time strongman part-time results i became a full-time strongman and full-time results and yeah. then you come into 16 and yeah i was right up your ass oh yeah on everything yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah i mean that was um it was fun man it was fun and i i liked i've always liked the challenge you know and you present you you began to present a a very good challenge and that was fun, yeah. right? Like, I liked that. I liked it. And, and you and I, ironically enough, people may or may not realize this, but even in in 16, we would compete, then go out to dinner, Yeah, right? And and it was like, oh, all right, you're going to pay tonight, I'll pay tonight. You yeah. know, it was literally like that, which was which is so unique. It is. It's so unique, especially for two guys like us that are so, especially at that point, ultra competitive. Right, it was weird. It was weird. It was yeah. weird. We're two massive alpha males complete competing against each other. Yep, and we compete all day. Yep, and then second that contest is over, it was just me and you. It was no yep. one else. No. It was like you're coming yep. out for a steak, Brian. Yeah, and we would. We'd go to a steakhouse. That's it. Yep. And go me and you, and say you'd pay next night. I'd pay. Yep, and we'd eat all the meals together, hang out. But when that whistle blew, it was go time. Yeah, we were yeah. we were worst enemies, but yep. we were able to sw- flip back, which I think was was it made it enjoyable. Yeah, it did. It, it did. did. It took a lot yeah. of pressure off of me, and I, I'd imagine it would for you as well, yeah. just having that that company. Well, I mean, it's we, lonely. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. It's yeah. A fucking yeah, lonely yeah. sport. Yeah, and and it's a different. Again, it's a different respect. I think outside of competition and in competition, right? So, so, you know, I can appreciate that, and I knew all of the stuff that you were doing. I mean, you and I, you know, just to give one side story to that. The mattresses, I don't remember, you remember this, right? Yeah, yeah. How crap the mattresses oh, God, were, yeah. in, and we were in Botswana, yeah. and and we literally went to a shop, yeah. bought mattresses together, yeah. threw them in, and went back and, and, and took the mattresses, threw them out of our rooms, yeah. and put better mattresses in just to sleep better. Yeah. Because we, you know, you're doing all these different things, but that's one thing that's that's hard to pack right yeah. you yeah, can't yeah, really yeah. pack a mattress unless you have it shipped there or something but you're you're covering all these bases but it's like man both both of us were i think we we're talking about bad we were sleeping and yes. our backs hurt or whatever and you're like all right we got to fix this yeah to give ourselves a better opportunity to win and what a difference that made it did like it did both of us the next day we put the mattresses in mm. and i spoke to you the next morning like how do you sleep like fucking 10 times Way better. Better. And i was like same yeah like, that was a good choice Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and this is, it's, it's just the things that you do right to, to separate. Um, and you were willing to do those. And, and so, you know, 16, um, first time on the podium, right. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. How, what, what did that, place. what did that feel like for you? Um, well, I, I don't know if you remember, but I, I you dislocated didn't. my fingers. Yep. Two yep. of them. Yeah. Um, on one of the barrels yeah. in the pre-event testing, yes. right. Um, yeah. which completely destroyed my head. Yeah, but I, I I cracked on, um, and don't, believe me, the nerves kicked in, and I did great. But I came dead last on the frame Franker, carry. That's right. Everything else I did okay. At. I, obviously, it, it it affected my performance. Yeah, and for me, regardless of what anyone thinks, for me, I genuinely believed I was coming into sixteen and taking that title. Sure. Which genuinely. you should. Yes. You should. And yes. I mean, you're sitting here, and I'm the one that won. But yes. I would. I respect the fact that you're saying you're going there to win. Yeah. Right. Because I would say, I would have said the same thing, mm. right? Same thing for me in 17. Yeah. We'll get to that. But you know, 16, your, your mentality and, and going into any top level contest like that, you should be thinking that yeah. and you should be convinced of it, not just thinking it. Yeah. Right. Like you should eat it, sleep it, breathe it. That's what's going to happen. Right. Like yeah. you've dedicated now too much, just like I did. Yes. Right. You're too invested to go in and say, well, you know, you're walking in and say, well, Brian's going to beat me or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You're not saying that. Yeah. So it's, it's and, and that's a respect thing too. Of course right? it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I would, I would expect nothing less. Yeah. 
right? So I suppose that it was just huge disappointment for me. That third place was hard to take. Yeah. Because from 15 to 16, I was absolutely military. Yep. Like, I never missed a meal. I slept nine hours a night. I never missed a training session. I was military. Like, yep. if I, 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 I mean, other than my hand, I could stand in that third place spot and I could honestly, hand on heart, say, All right, Eddie, why didn't you win? I couldn't have stood there and said, well, it's because I missed a meal four weeks ago or I missed a training session a month ago. I couldn't because I didn't. I was yeah. absolutely military. I gave my heart and soul into that competition. So to have that injury and come third was heartbreaking. Yeah. Like literally heartbreaking. Yeah. And I suppose it put a fire under my belly for 17 to get yeah. that fixed as quick as possible sure. and get back to business and become that military mode again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the buildup, I mean... And and again, like I said, going into um, you know seventeen, the build up to that one was was fun too, right? I mean, that's uh, you know heavy, fun, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was hard, man. It was fucking hard. hard. Yeah, that it was, was heavy, right? The I weights think, and the weight again. Going back to you look at you look at fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. These weights at World Strongest Man were big. They were big. They were getting bigger year yeah. on year. And yeah. I think with seventeen is when we all hit our peak, size wise. Or me, you, and Thor. Uh, well, 17 was the biggest I ever was, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it was the biggest I ever was. It yep. was 433 pounds. And from memory, you were 455 or 460. 60. I was in the 60s, 460. 460 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And half four was 440 something. I think he was 450. Was he? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that year we got. Or in 455. We've got even. three yeah. of the biggest men to have ever competed in strongman. Yeah. So the, the pressure for that year was insane. Oh, yeah. For all of us, you could see it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the bags under our eyes, the red yeah. eyes, like we were all fucking worried yeah. about that competition. Yeah. Every, well, everybody wanted to win, man. I mean, it was a high, like, I, it's hard to, um, it's hard to explain to people, anybody listening, like the, the, when you put that much into something going there, right, you know, it's the moment, yeah, right. You know, you know, what's on the line you've worked hard for, you know, quite literally for a year, but mo- definitely the last three or four months is like, your head down, everything, right? Everything is is on the line for that. So when the tension, I mean, I, I remember going into that, like the tension was crazy, oh, right? Yes. It, it was crazy and and it was fun. But you again, you thrive on it. And, um, you know, I, uh, for me, I, I remember the, the tire flip was the first event in 17, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, that was one that I won. And I, rem- I remember, and I don't know if you remember this, I, was, I, I said, I did kind of pull the Eddie Hall in that moment. Uh, mate, right? I remember it vividly. Yeah. What do you remember? So I remember the first event and you did the tire, you won the tire flip. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, you were like a gorilla. Yeah. You were just walking around. This is my competition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm me, world's strongest man. And yeah. I just, I remember, I mean, we were pally, but I remember looking yeah. on, I was like, fuck you, Brian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah fuck yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. fucking prick. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just, you did your you did a good job. Yeah. You got in everyone's head. Yeah, yeah. Like it fucking worked. Yeah. And I remember going back to my tent and I sat down with my physio. He's like, you're right. And I'm like, no, I fucked up there. Like fifth place is fucking shit. Yeah. I was like, but there's five more events. And yeah. I'm fucking winning this. Yeah. And I just well, got you and I just like got that. on with it. Yeah. You know, I just I just I was all right, put that behind me now. Yeah. But yeah, you you did a good job. Like you stirred me up for a bit, but I took me took me a lot of Took a lot of willpower to sort of sit sit down and think, no, yeah, he has not got this. Yeah. You know, I can, yeah. I've got this. I just, I mean, in any contest, you want to set the tone. And I think that, that that's where, you know, the, every event, man, every event was that way, right? Like, and, and that's how it should be. Mm. That's how it should be. And, and, you know, I mean, obviously you did great with the squat. You did, you know, and the thing is the consistency then from that point for you. Yeah. You were consistent through the events and, you know, I don't really want to get into all the, you know, the controversy stuff, really. I mean, it's, it's been, a, it's been, fucking, it's been yeah. trial and error so many times. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, bro, like I could go back to so many different contests at World's Strongest Man. And, and, and in all fairness, I could bring up more moments that were controversial. Yeah. Right. That, that did not get the, the airtime, so to speak. Yes that that 2017 did i mean i can go back and you know there's a moment in 2012 i could bring that i mean i could bring up all these moments and again they just haven't quite caught the airtime and maybe that's because of social media different reasons but 
you know, the, the fact of the matter was that was, that was your year that you won, mm -hmm. right? So you won world strongest man. So t tell me what that was like for you. Cause I remember winning my first one and you know, I mean, how did that play out? I mean, for me, it was, it was the pressure. Yeah. It was the pressure. It was, all, it was all the shit going on at home. It was the military precision and my training. Yeah. I mean, I remember five, five weeks out, six weeks out. Um, if you remember, I did the Europe's. Yes. Against Hathor. Yep. Yep. And I tore my oblique, what do you call it? Your, your diaphragm. Okay. Like the, your, your chest muscles anyway, all of your ribs and everything. Yeah, diaphragm. Diaphragm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember doing, I did Europe's against Thor and he, and he just pipped me. And on the car walk, I, I sort of tore something in my chest. And I remember at the time thinking, Jesus Christ, this is, this is bad. Like, yeah. wow, this is, this is a bad injury. And it did actually turn out that it was actually a bit of a heart strain. <laughs> Oh, sh really? Yeah. Wow. So, like, having that uh, lingering in my head, would going, not, in, yeah, would going into Will's Strongest Man yeah. was horrendous, and I had to keep quiet. Yeah, yeah. And I did the ECG, and okay. I failed the ECG for the medical. Huh. I failed it. So, what they had to do, because, like, I was sort of, like, in and out of all the medics, and is it Dr. I forget oh. his name. Lovely bloke. Yeah, Richard Smith. Richard, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, Richard yeah. Smith, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Smith. So in about, in about communication, and so I had, I had to go and get in a full ecogram, which is basically a full heart scan. Yeah. Yep. And they did the scan, and thank God, I mean, other than having, like, thickening arteries and, like, an enlarged heart, they yeah. were like, no, superhuman. Huh. And that was, like, two weeks before I flew out to Will's Strongest Man. So you're going through that, which is obviously playing yeah, in your head. which was horrendous. Yeah, yeah. And I think that okay literally lifted so much weight off my shoulder because I genuinely thought I was going to die. Yeah, that's tough, man. I did. Yeah. Like, I thought, I was, I was 430 pounds. Sure. I was massive. I, I was six foot, six foot two and a half. You know, I'm not the yeah. biggest of guys. I was absolutely, I was spheric. Yeah. I, I was a sphere. You, know? <laughs> you, you were, you were a little it was, bit. It was, yeah. it was ridiculous how big yeah. I was. Yeah. So going through all that and like the, the, that pressure was horrendous. And I remember it was it was about five weeks out. Me and the wife had uh, quite a big sort of tiff where, because I was just disregarding the family so much, like I didn't care about my wife. That's horrible to say. Yeah. I didn't care about my kids. I didn't care about my parents. I didn't care about paying the mortgage. I didn't care about anything. Yeah. I just wanted to win the world's strongest man. Yeah. And five weeks out, my wife says to me, like, like, I've had enough. Like, you've you've literally just ignored me for for two years solid. You've, you're obsessive. Yeah. You, all you care about is winning the world's strongest man. Yeah. And I remember saying to my wife, well, well, fuck off then. Yeah. Fuck off. Get out my head. Get out yeah. my headspace. Because I'm, I'm winning this fucking competition. Yeah. I'm winning the world's strongest man. And when I've won it, I will come back and I will fix this fucking marriage. Yeah. And that's exactly what that, so that was lingering over my head. Man, I like, that's a lot of weight, bro. It was horrible. So I was yeah. coming in, like, if I didn't win that competition, I'm fairly certain my marriage would have been over. Yeah. Because I would have been fixated on the next year. Sure. You know? So, you know, my, literally my life was on the balance for that competition. So, yeah. so coming into that with all that pressure, with the heart, with the health scares, with, the, you know, the family and everything, you know, with yeah. my son and everything, you know, I just, so much pressure. So I think just to like go through that competition, do what I did. And I remember that last event, you know, I, up until that point, I was quite calm. And then the Atlas Stones, I was fucking shitting myself. Yeah. You know, I was cacking myself. I was like, all I've got to do is come top four and I've won this. Sure. It's all I've got to do. Yeah. And then like I put four up and I actually put four up faster than anybody. Yeah. I put four stones up faster than Thor. Yeah. And then I fucking, like, the fifth one just slipped. And I, I was leaning against the plinth, and I'm thinking, right, I only had to come top four. No one else got five stones up, so I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. I'm safe. Yeah. And then I just saw, like, I, I don't know if it was Colin or Darren or one of the referees just shouted at me, Eddie, get that last stone up quick. And I just thought to myself, fuck, have I fucked up? Yeah. Like, have I miscalculated? Have I got the points wrong? Yeah. So I, I slapped on it, got it up, and I think there was like one, 1. 1.4 seconds left on the clock, and I got that fifth stone up. Yeah. I'd already won by the fourth. Yeah. But it was just that sheer panic. And yeah, the relief. Like, jeez, man. 
you must you, obviously you've won you when you won your first title. I think it's just the relief of all that hard work, all that sacrifice, all that dedication. Yeah pays off and then I, as you saw you know i broke down man that was yeah that was a life's hard work into one day one moment sure and that's that's how it is that's not not a lot of people will ever understand that man it's and and again you know it's it's different i think i understand it more right because i've been through i've lived it right yeah. like so i've lived the ups and downs i've had you know, things I've had to work through, things I've had to overcome, things that didn't go my way, right? Like all of this different stuff and you go through it. That's why I'm asking, you know, that question because there's, you know, it's um, to take a, a, how do I put this? To take a step back, right? And I, I'm living this moment. I want to live the moment with you because mm. we're talking about you, right? So it's kind of like I have my, you know, me walking away from that is going to be different than you, yeah. right? So 2017, as convinced as I was walking in there, because, I mean, I had done the Arnold. I literally yeah. won the Arnold almost without having to do the last event. And I'm yes. like, I'm I'm in shape, man. Like, I'm ready. I'm the biggest, strongest, like, you know, everything. And, and you know, there's some things that looking back at any contest, any true competitor is going to say, I wish I could have changed this. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could have changed this. I wish I would have done that a little bit different. I would have, my strategy there was off. So you think about those things. And that's what I think about. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, it's just natural, but for you, I mean, your deadlift there was ridiculous, man. Like I remember that moment because I went up and I, I lifted the, I think it was 1016, like a 460. 460 kilo. Something like that. Yeah, so it was, yeah, yeah. it was, you know, a thousand and I, I tore my hamstring on it. Yeah. Right. And, and I finished the lift and I remember I went down to my knee and I knew I had, I had tore it on the way up. Right. If it still yeah, yeah. finished the lift, which was excruciating. And I went down on my knee and I was like, I am not going to show these guys I'm hurt. I don't want to tell, I don't want them to know, like, I'm just going to go down to my knee and that's it. Right. And it was kind of like one of these things where I just said, I bowed out and then yeah. you and Hofthor went um, up and you, I mean, your last lift there was ridiculous, which was awesome. Um, you know, but that opened the door for you yeah. going into the stones is yeah. you had to do it. You were going to do it yeah. right. Like that, that lift that day you had more in the tank. Right. So it was something where it's like, all right, now the stones and you know, for that last stone, man, it's like, like, you know, like I remember those moments winning and, and especially my first one, you put that stone and be like, all right, I did it. Yeah. Right. I did it. And, and you, I can imagine with what you're telling me now, even more so the weight that you must have felt kind of off of your shoulders or the oh, emotion man. or all of these factors kind of boiled into one moment is huge. Yes. It's huge. And I remember you being emotional and, and it's kind of like a, it's such a bittersweet thing, man, um, for me personally, because I had saw your journey coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. So like what you and you and I had talked and we had spent a lot of time outside of the contest now at this point. So it's like a bittersweet, sweet thing. Right. Yeah. And I mean, sure. I'm sure it was kind of that way for you in 16 when I won. Yeah, cool. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like, all right, you know, like I can step back and appreciate what you've had to, to sacrifice, what yeah. you've had to go through. And every, of course, you know, when you're when you're that type of competitor, you want to win. Yeah. Right. That's natural, bro. Like it's, it's, and, and so I'd be lying if I said like, at some point it's like, man, I wish I would have done this, but like for you to see your emotion and see you go through, that was also special, um, as well in a lot of ways. So it's, it's like, you know, you had done that and, um, kind of got all that weight off, off of your back, so yeah. to speak, which was different. So how, how was it after, after winning? Like what, what, what transpired? How did you feel? How did the marriage go? Like, I yeah, mean, well, all of these, I just say all that pressure came off and, you know, I knew instantly I could drop some weight and fucking hell did I, you yeah. know, I think I dropped five stones. So I dropped like 25, 24 kilo in the first two months. Wow. Just fell off me. Yeah. And it just got my weight down really quickly. So yeah. I don't know, I dropped like 60 pounds in the first month or something. That's crazy. 50 pounds. Sorry. Um, and the, yeah, so that pressure just left off. And of course I get home and, it just instantly fixed things with me and my wife because that pressure was gone. You were probably a different person. Yeah, completely. I would imagine, yeah. Completely. You know, that obsessiveness, it was like, I mean, yeah, you know, I went on a journey of capitalizing, you know, TV shows, endorsements, mm. evening webs, you know, I racked up the money. But, yeah, that, that relationship blossomed and, and, and starting to, you know, see my kids, actually, for the first time. Yeah. You know, spend time with my kids for the first time in, in forever. You know, I think at the time I had a, my daughter would have been nine and my son would have been four. 
five nearly, and I didn't know my kids. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a very sad thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't know my kids at all, but I think I think that sacrifice is is something I'm I'm. Although it was hard and horrible, and it's done some damage, you know, I, I'm I'm very very proud of myself for putting myself through that in a way. Yeah, because. Because no, not many men would do that. You know, yeah. not many men would put the marriage on the line and sacrifice time with the kids because sure. it is, it's a horrible thing to do. Yeah. And all yeah. that pressure afterwards just came off. And I think for me, it was having finding that purpose again after Will Strongest Man was tough. Yeah. Was really tough. Of course, doing the endorsements or whatever kept me busy, but finding that purpose was hard. It's been, it's been well documented that people that win Olympic gold medal medals and, and win world championships – Afterwards, you know, they have the massive high, they have the massive euphoria. Yeah. And then for me, it was, you know, getting home and that realization that you've still got to sit down and take a shit like everybody else. Right. Yeah. That's the truth of it. And that's a yeah. hard thing for people like me and yourself to take in sometimes is yeah. that sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and go, I'm not better than anybody else. This well, is, I'm not living in this special world. I'm a normal human being. And yeah. But coming back down to that reality is fucking hard. Well, there's always that, that high going back to a low right and and i've i've noticed it as well i mean you go to um and a, a big you know let's just say you go to a big contest where it's tied to an expo or something like that and you know you're kind of like you're you're this adrenaline rush right where you're going and lead up lead up build up build up okay we're going to compete then you're doing the expo and, and everybody's kind of yeah, yeah. saying hi and you're doing this and you're doing that and then the next day you get home and you sit down in your living room and it's like wow okay this yeah. is you're coming back down it's like you almost just need to take that deep breath out but world's strongest man or winning a title like that's a different it's yeah. just a different feeling because you walk back and especially with what the weight that you had on your shoulders now i can understand even more because we literally got in the truck ed and i don't know if you remember this after, after you won yeah and um I had, in all, in all fairness, I was very thankful for you having the truck because I couldn't get in the bus. Yeah. Remember, because my leg yeah, was yeah, all yeah. messed up. So you get back and you're like, all right, that's it, man. I'm done. Yeah. And I remember I remember just kind of sitting there in the truck and I, I, I don't know if I even said anything because I was like, you're done. Yeah, you were very... I can't believe you were, you're you done. Were like, I mean, you were quiet. You were injured. You were yeah. upset. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember I remember saying that to you. Like, you did. Yeah. I in said, that moment. Yeah, I'm done now, Brian. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm retired. That's it. I'm done. And I, I just, it was such a different um, reaction, but now what's ironic about it is having this conversation right now with you, I understand. Yeah. I understand more. Yeah. Right. Because that's a lot of weight, bro. Like I, I, I had, I feel like pressure on me in, in world's strongest man, but I didn't, I didn't ever have that. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't, I didn't have that type of, you know, pressure. And again, maybe it was just a, di a different you know everybody's got a different scenario they're going through right so like what you're going through and the pressure that you had in, in that type of moment like you know it's just crazy it's crazy to think but i understand why those words came out of your mouth and it was probably just this realization of like i cannot i can't do that and go through that and i have i have things now that i need to go back that i put on hold yeah, yeah. and i need to fix yeah you know exactly and it makes sense it was, yeah it makes sense exactly what it was it wasn't it wasn't about, you know, the accolades. It wasn't like I want to come in and win it win it once and win it twice, three times. It was I just needed to achieve this dream to set my life up. Yep. To give back, to repay all that sacrifice, all that time taken away from my kids, taken away yep. from my wife. This was to pay back. And now I am. Now yeah. I'm now I've got all the time in the world. Yeah. And I've got all the I don't want to sound arrogant about it. But I've got all the finances in the world to to pay back the, all those failed, sure. failed, failed promises, and yeah. you know, give back, and and that's such a nice feeling. Um, what's What's interesting, and I don't know if you thought about this because you said earlier in us talking here, all those people in school, whether it's teachers or administrators or whoever, saying you're going to be a failure, mm. you're going to fail, right? Like at that early age, do you look back at that now and say? I don't know what you would say, but at that age, like thinking like back to that kid that was in his room at, you know, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and this rock bottom where these people are saying this to me now, those people, right. Like, cause I had people say it to me too. Yeah. That I would not in that same exact way, but people said, 
you know, when I got into strongman, you're never going to win world's yeah, strongest yeah. man. You're never going to do it. And, and it's like to, to, to block that out, to overcome that, to, to prove those people wrong in a lot of different ways. And I feel like you were able to, in, in a lot of circumstances, because like you said, you were that guy, right? Love you, hate you, whatever people would pay attention. Yeah. Right. And you brought that on yourself. So you would throw it out there. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you were posting and I'll, I'll say this, like you would post going into world's strongest man. You would post a gold trophy, yep. right? Like you're, you're going to win. And that every time I saw one of your posts, <laughs> it pissed me off so bad. And I'm like, who does this guy? I'm, I'm literally back to back world's strongest man. Oh, you see, Brian. Yeah. I knew that was the case. No, I know. I know yeah. you knew it. That's it's, why I did it. Because, and I, it's because the same, that's what it does to people. Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's <laughs> the same thing with me yelling after that first event. Yeah. It's the exact yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing, right? Like you just, you just happen to throw it out there and you're just like, I'm coming for this gold trophy. I'm getting... And I'm just like, you, you, you know, like, even though we're friends, it's like, I'm seeing that post and I was like, well, Ed, you don't know you're, you're firing me up even yeah, more, yeah. bro. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm adding an extra yeah, set yeah. today because yeah, of that, yeah. you know, like that's what, what would happen. But like, I feel like you fed off of people saying you couldn't do oh. things. So it's, and we didn't even touch on where I've obviously been on the track of world's strongest man, but the same thing with the deadlift that you did, right? Yeah. Like, like the, the big deadlift, you obviously broke the world record um, in Australia and then you set out on this mission and threw it out there. I'm going to lift 500 kilos, right? Like, and, and put that pressure on all of the people that said, you couldn't do that. You're not going to do that, right? It's not possible, blah, 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 whatever, right? And I feel like you're a guy that loves to put your back against a wall and say, I'm going to do it, right? Like, I'm going to do it. And I, I you know, um, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing. But talk about that a little bit. So I mean, thinking back to like my childhood and all the, like all the teachers, I wouldn't say it was a lot of you're going to fail or you're not going to do very well in life, but they sort of like insinuate it in other ways, you know. And I, actually, one of my, one of my memories when I was going through all that tough time at high school and ultimately led to me getting expelled. But I remember it was actually a substitute teacher who actually made me realize something one day and I was in the class, I was messing about being a right knobhead and afterwards this, this substitute teacher, never met him before, asked me to stay behind, behind like after the class and uh, bear in mind, I was a big lad and this teacher just laid into me. Yeah. Like properly like, calling me all sorts of names, dickhead, idiot, fucking this, fucking that. Prodded, really? The teacher did? Yeah. Wow. Pr prodded me in the fucking chest yeah, saying if you were out of school, I'd fucking tear your head off and all this. And and he, he said to me, he's like, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah. So like, what, what, you think your swimming's going to pay off, do you? You think you're a big fucking big time swimmer? Just proper laid into me. And, and I remember walking out of that room and just being like, fucking hell, that was a, that was a wake up call. Huh. It was a wake up call. It was like, you know, this this guy's completely right. You know, I can't rely on the swimming. I can't rely on that solely because I did yeah you know at the time I was like I'm going to be an Olympic swimmer I don't give a fuck about anything else I was, don't get me wrong my grades were good but I was just acting like such a dickhead in class and everything and that was a that stayed with me a lot yeah. of like this guy basically said you're not going to make a living out of sport yeah. and that that hit home where I thought you know what he's, he's probably fucking right I'm probably not so that's when I, I sort of did knuckle down a little. I got expelled anyway, but I did sort of knuckle down a little bit, and that's when the, that's when I really did realize that I need my grades, I need my GSEs. So when I was home tutored, I paid attention, you know, and I did get good grades, and obviously getting into jobs and everything else. And I I, ended, I did. I ended up working a job for. I mean, I was a mechanic for ten years. Yeah. Worked on the on security for eight years, you know, and they were hard. That was they were hard, horrible days. Yeah. And, you know, that teacher, that substitute teacher sort of, sort of warned me about that. Yeah. That's what life is. It's hard. Yeah. So, so did that play into all the people that said you couldn't, I mean, as well, like, like him saying that or, or whoever else, I mean, you, could you, like, I, like I kind of asked, it's like, like people, and I saw it, like you would get a lot of abuse from people saying, you're not going to do this. There's no way, you know, cause when people come out and make statements, yeah you 
and some of the statements you made were bold. Like, yeah, like yeah. I said, with the deadlift, with winning world's strongest man. I mean, these are not small things where if you were to fail, yeah, then everybody would go after you. Yeah, and right? laugh and ridicule. Exactly. And they never let you forget it. No. That's no, the no, no. problem. But you've, and, and one of the things, as you said, you'll back up your bullshit. Yeah. Right? And I remember you actually had a shirt at one point that said yeah, that yeah. on it or whatever. Yeah. But it was, it was kind of one of those things where you started doing that, but then you would back it up. Yes. Right? So that, I think you, you enjoyed in a lot of ways feeding off of people that would tell you you couldn't. Yes. Right? No, and it would drive you. Yeah. I mean, it would drive me too. I'm not. I'm not yeah. saying that it's only you. Like I, you know, you have the positive support for sure, and I love that, really do. But then you'd have these people that would come in and say you can't do this. It's still to this day, yeah, literally to this day, people will say I can't do something, and it's like, well, I don't think you realize who you're talking to. Yeah, right. And you, I'm sure, thought the same way. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly that. And I think, I think that that substitute teacher just sparked off that that fuel like fueling the fire so to say that always resonated me with me when i was working these long days yeah and and then you know doing my training and then going to work again at night and moonlighting and and that just echoed around my head yeah. all throughout my career is that substitute teacher telling me you're never going to do anything with sport yeah and then it came about and and it not in a peevish way but sort of a like a fuck you yeah. like i did i did do something with sport in the end yeah, you know, I made something of myself, uh, and it's just having that self belief, as you say. You, and I like to put pressure pressure on myself. I did enjoy that. You yeah. know, at nineteen, I said I was going to win the world's strongest man. Yeah. Put it on my socials. Told everyone I could. Yeah, and I enjoyed that pressure. I think. I mean, looking back now, I, I like to. I like the saying of "under pressure creates diamonds." Yeah, some people fold, and some people, you know, they thrive. And I, I'm definitely a thriver when it comes to pressure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think through all, all my career, as you say, you have the negativity. You know, I used to say to people at the gym, I'm going to win the world's strongest man. And, you know, I'd walk off and go training, and you'd hear them laughing. Yeah. You'd hear them pissing themselves. Like, you hear that fucking dick I just said, yeah. so you're going to win the world's strongest man. Yeah. And you'd hear it. Yeah. And I suppose it's just, and then I'd go straight to my sets, and I'd fuel for the fire, man. You know, I'd, I'd go at it. And I suppose the deadlift was probably the worst, worst case of that. And... I mean, I say pressure creates diamonds, and I enjoy pressure. But Jesus Christ, did I put some pressure on myself for the deadlift? No, you did, man. You definitely did. You it, definitely did. It. And and that was, it was a bold move, man. A bold, bold move. You know, and and that's um, not that world str winning world strongest man is in a bold statement as well. But you know, I think it just in the time it was kind of like you're you're putting yourself out on a limb, and I'm going to do this, and then then. You know, that was probably a little bit of a roller coaster ride behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, are you going to do it? Yeah. Can you do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you questioning yourself a little bit? Yeah. Like, because I'm sure you had a bad, I mean, you had at some point, you had, had a bad training day, something didn't go to plan, whatever. And you're like, man, a life. This is a big, it's a big jump. I right? think in some ways that was a bigger statement than saying I was going to win the world's strongest man was the, the five hundred. I think, it, I think it caught more attention. Yeah. Because there's been guys, not to say that you're not, one of you know a select few that do kind of throw it out there but there's guys now even now that'll say i'm gonna win the world's strongest man i'm good like it's it's more common yes to to hear i'm going to do this yeah and i think the way you put the deadlift out there was um unique in in okay well not everybody was saying that right yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was kind of you know a, a different way to think right and i i thought very different about any record i ever did it was kind of like all right it's going to come within a contest like i'll do this i'm going to break it a little bit yeah and that's what i did man yeah. and, and it was it was a game plan strategy for me in the fact that if i for example when i was breaking the stone records if i broke it by five pounds it wasn't hard for me yeah right so guess what next year i can do it by five pounds again yes. and get get you know, whatever bonus money, et cetera. Yeah. But if you go in and break it by 60, 70, 80, hundred pounds, yeah. now all of a sudden I can't just do that every single day. Yes. So my strength with certain records that I did was like, it's not hard for me to do, but with a deadlift, you could have said, Hey, I'm just going to take it up 10 pounds, which would have been yeah, yeah. still a significant jump, but you wanted to take it up to this, you know, this level that, that ha hadn't been done at all not even close yeah. right I mean, so let, let me work out how many pounds i i said i would break it by it was about 70 so it's 35 30, right 37 kilos is it 2.2 2.2 2.22 2. 
So I said I was going to break the world record deadlift by 82 pounds. 82. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. When, when I announced it. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, why did I do it? Yeah. In all honesty, it was it was for money. Yeah. From being truthful. At the time, it was like, I just quit my job. Yeah. I had some savings in the bank. Sponsors weren't great. Yeah. You, know, I, you know, I wasn't doing that. I was doing okay. You know, I was getting by, but I wasn't, I wasn't making stupid money. Yeah. So... And you know how expensive it is to be the world's strongest man. Massive. Yeah. Like you've got to put some money in. Did yeah. you say like three hundred dollars a week on physio? Yeah. You know, another three hundred dollars a week just on your food. Well, I was. I mean, at, at certain points for me, and this is before I had any type of help with food at all. I was at like three thousand dollars a month in food. There you go. Three thousand. So I mean, that's what. What does that work out to? You know, that's a lot. And that's just for right. you. That's not your wife and kids. No, no, no. Just that's for just, me. Yeah, I was the same. It but was, if you're buying it, again, it, you're talking quality, quality yeah. meat, organic. Right? Like and, if I'm eating almost yeah. five pounds of meat a day, yeah. Sometimes the meat was about twenty dollars a pound. Yes. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. literally just in meat potentially at a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Per day. <laughs> Right, like that's cr- most people would be like, "What are you doing?" You know, but yeah. I was like, "Okay, if I do this, I'm gonna get this out of it." Yeah. Right, so go on though. Like, I mean, you're 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 putting yeah. it all out there. I mean, I'm not as money. big as not as big as each of you, but yeah, yeah, three hundred, three hundred. I was spending three hundred English pounds a week on food, which, which is still, which back then, yeah, you got to think it was two dollars to the pound. Yep. So you probably are talking, yep. you know, close to a hundred dollars a day, you know, yep. six hundred dollars a week. Yep. So yeah, so very similar, very similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, putting that kind of money in it and buying cold tubs, buying hot tubs, you know, traveling, doing your competing, it's just endless. That it, it's such. I reckon you could you could put fifty grand a year, at least, into just be just being a top level strongman, yeah. and you wouldn't get much change out of that. Yeah, at all. Yeah, that's just for you. That's just your food. Yeah. You know, your your training, your physio, all that. That you're talking fifty fifty thousand sterling. Yeah. A year. You could and this is the thing, is when you're going to that level, I agree with you, man. It's 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 the treatment, it's the extra stuff. It's you know, and I um for me, I set it up so it was mainly after we had our first son, Braxton, I was going to a place and I would literally spend hours down there. Yeah. Hours for treatment. They had a hot and cold, they had different treatment devices. And I was like, Well, I need to move this home. Yes. So that's when I invested, but people don't realize how much money that stuff oh, costs. It's, it's insane. And I, and, and I think, you know, I, I invested a lot of money, a lot of money in myself. And it was like, Hey, I need this. It's $10,000. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's do it. And this is 20,000. This is 30,000. Yeah. And, and, and you, you, you spend the money, but again, it's an investment in yourself. It's a business. To get better. It's yeah. a business. Yeah. And that's why you put these things for your business. You know, yeah. you buy, I bought my cult or my hot tub, my hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. I put a portion of my food through the business. Yeah. You know, because you ha- otherwise you're just going to be, you're going to be absolutely skint. You're not yeah. going to be able to pay your mortgage. So so you did it for money. I did it but for money. Did it pay off early on or, or did it pay off after the fact? It paid off after. After, I think, okay. Yeah. I think, because think, when I announced it, I said I was going to put the 500 kilo deadlift, 1,102 pounds yeah. for American terms. And I was laughed at, let's be blunt. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was laughed at. The, the promoters laughed at me. When I said to the promoters, how much, how much would you give me to pull 500 kilos next year? And they literally burst out laughing, like, how much do you want? Yeah. You know, that's the kind of attitude I got all the all the way through. The strongman competitors, I think yourself included. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Right. I was I was more confident and I had seen you pull the four sixty one. Is that what you did in, in, in the Arnold? Australia sixty two, yeah. Six four sixty two, right? Yeah. So that and that wasn't I mean, that was a good lift, but it was kind of like, okay, now we're talking like at that type of weight, this is what I think general people don't quite understand that type of jump at that type of weight yes geez. we're not we're not and that that doesn't that's where for me it's kind of like i didn't think it was impossible i never thought it was impossible because of the type of weights that were pulled from a higher height yeah it was just whether you could get it off the floor my question for you was could you get it off the floor and get it past your knees um, and then, then could you get your hips through and lock it out? Yeah, right. Yeah. But you, you trained in a specific way where it was so explosive off the floor. And I thought, all right, if he can get it moving off the floor, mm. right. And stay in position, 
then it's it's got a shot. Like I think yeah, you yeah. have a shot, right? And then I think most people would say on that day when you did it, it was four sixty five was the jump before that. Is that right? Four six five, yeah. Then but you did you did four sixty five like the easiest. It was ridiculous how easy. And I said, okay, this is a real like it's real. You've got yeah. a real real shot at this, right? So it's not. Well, are you, but are you saying you didn't believe it until I pulled that four sixty five on the day? I. Here's the thing is I, I, what I wanted, and I think I told you this before, cause I was invited to come over. Mm, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to jump for me at about 400 or, well, I guess it would be in pounds. Uh, I wanted to pull between a thousand fifty and a thousand seventy. That's what I thought I yeah, was yeah, good yeah. for. Yeah. And I wanted to do that. And they, they had the jump set, which I respected. And I said, okay, I'm not coming because I don't want to tie. I thought it would be a tie at 465. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I said before and and I think I you know I told you that I thought it was a long shot. Yeah, I did. I remember think that. you saying. Yeah. I did think that, but again, like I know you, and I know um, where you were going and what you were putting into it, right? And different things you had said to me at certain points of time to me personally, not on camera, not anywhere else. I was like, all right, this dude is crazy enough to go here and to believe it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was where I thought the X that was my X factor for you. Yeah. It wasn't like I was saying. Um, like for me, I, I didn't say I was at that level. So I thought I could set a new best for me at like four. I thought, I guess that would be what, 470, 480 maybe? Yeah. Like somewhere in there. Yeah. Like that was what I thought, like my training was dictating at that point, which would have been, I would have loved to have pulled that weight. But again, it was like, I thought that that was the X factor for you. Yeah. You had an X factor and you did with World's Strongest Man. You did with this that I saw and I could see that the, you you just have a different spot that you can go in your brain yeah. that most people can't comprehend. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just, just as so you had to prove, you had to prove it. Yeah. Though. Like I was like, yeah. I was, I was watching it, bro. I watched it. Yeah. And I think that you were that, the first one to text me after. Yeah. You were. Yeah. Yep. So I like, it was like, man, when you pull, I think it became more like, I was kind of more like w with the four sixty five. the way that that went was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see what's, what, let's see, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, it, it, it's, <laughs> and I think that the adrenaline yeah. of that environment for you was, I can only imagine how you were feeding off of that, where you were going in your brain, you it know. It was, well, as I say, I mean, the promoters were negative. Yeah. Let's say 99% of the strong men were, I agree. were negative. I agree. And, 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 and I, I wasn't fully confident. I'm not mm. sitting here and saying, I thought you had an X factor to it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But. You know, in your training, you, you you had pulled some really impressive weights, but then I was kind of like, again, going back to when you get to a heavy weight, yeah. if you put kilos. another 10 kilos on, yeah. it's okay. a massive yeah, yeah, difference. Yeah. And I understood that. So it was kind of like, all right, yeah. I saw you do some pulls and you actually texted me a couple before, I think. Yeah. You sent me a video and you're like, I didn't share it. He's like, I haven't shared this, Brian. I'm just showing you. And I was like, okay. All right. You know, like you start to kind of yeah, yeah. buy into it a little bit. I mean, I want, in all fairness, I wanted you to do it. I was, I was, I knew what was on the backside of it for you. So I, I, I didn't want you to fail. Right. Like I, I'm a fan of big weights, bro. Like yeah, yeah. I am, I'm a genuine fan of strongman. I'm a fan of lifting. So like, I didn't, I didn't want you to fail the lift. That's not what, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was interesting to watch it go down, bro, because you put again, the amount of pressure again you had on you is ridiculous. Yeah. So. So yeah. So like just the the negativity and and the fans were the worst. How many people? How many people do you think reached out or or that that believed in you? Like I mean, did you less, saying that like so many people that like the than, other strong less men? than three percent. Three percent of people. Yeah. 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 Less than three percent like backed yeah. it. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um. And that you you think about that when you you say something. Yeah. And ninety-seven percent of the people you speak to are saying, like, "Fuck off, yeah, idiot, yeah, yeah, impossible." Yeah. yeah, and I remember reading on the forums because that's where it's really debated. Sure, on the forums, on Reddit, and and whatever else. Something, yeah. And I remember reading on there like, "Are we ever going to see uh, an eleven hundred pound deadlift?" And every single comment was like, "No fucking way!" Like this guy is deluded. It's gone up one. It's gone up one kilo or two pounds every year for the last twenty years, and this guy thinks he's going to break it by thirty-seven kilos or eighty pounds in, in, in one eighty-four day. pounds in one day. Like this yeah. guy's fucking deluded. And I'm reading through this, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, 
I've got to do this now. Yeah. I've put myself in a position where I'm going to look like such a dickhead if I don't do it. Yeah. You know, I put that much pressure on myself. So you, were, I think, you were training in, in a gym where that people could be there, right? Yeah. I mean, were there people watching? Like, did you try to keep that private at all or no? No, people watching. Um, I'll be honest, I never pulled above 454 kilos in the gym. That's the most I ever pulled. So four, 454 is 1,000 thousand. Thousand yeah. pounds. So 100 pounds under. Yeah. Okay. So that's the most I ever pulled. But um, you sent me that and that was a ridiculous pull. Yeah, that was very that simple. Was, that was raw, no belt. Okay. Um, you know, pair of squidgy trainers on. Yeah. You know. How many, we- I can't remember how many, how many weeks out did you do that? Do you remember? I'm going to say two weeks out. Two, so that was your last heavy. Yeah. Last, okay. Two weeks out, I pulled okay. four, 454 for three singles. So like, you know, I do, do one, nice. rip it up, take yeah. a 10, 15 minute break, do, do it, it again. again. 15 minute break, do it again. Yeah. Three singles. That was it. That was, build up to that. That was my training session for two weeks. Out. That's that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess just the 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 swole of negativity around that was just insane. Yeah. And coming into the coming into the day, you know, you're in the interviews. I remember being in the interview room, and they're all asking me like, so, so you know, what's going to go down? I'm like, I'm going to pull five hundred kilo off the floor, and everyone's going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, it was like it was just that arrogant. Like, yeah. you know, everyone's sitting behind the camera, you're just going like, fucking nutcase, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fuel to the fire, man. Like I, I did thrive off that. Yeah, I did thrive did. that ninety-seven yeah. percent. I thrived off it. It made me train hard. Yeah, because I, in all honesty, you know, not only did I want the money, I was scared of looking a dickhead. I was scared yeah. of like embarrassing myself in a way. Sure. So I mean, that lift, that that lift would set me up good. Yeah, you know, the the, the prize money. Um, I think I think that combined <laughs> combined with world's strongest man. I mean, it's it's kind of like doing that the way that you did it. Again, it's 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 it would be very different. Not that it wouldn't not be it would not be a great accomplishment, but I feel like if you would have just rocked up on the day, never said anything, and, yeah. and and you just had trained behind closed doors, never made a statement, never whatever, and you pulled four sixty five, and then maybe they made a jump, and then you said, hey. Throw five hundred on. I'm gonna do it yeah. right, and then you just did it. I don't think it would have caught the steam no. that it did. The way that you put it out there, and 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 so many people were doubting. So many it's, people were. It's the Muhammad Ali effect. Yeah, you 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 put yourself in the corner, bro. You've got to yeah. say you're the greatest before you become the greatest. <laughs> you know, and that's that's yeah. literally that was my that was my mindset, and that's yeah. what made it iconic in a way. Yeah, is it, it was the impossible, and people yeah. were left, right, and center saying it was impossible. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, I guess, I mean, the lift itself was, I, I, I mean, the money, the, the reward is why I did it. Yeah. You know, the money. Well, it's a driving factor. Oh, it was massive. So you have, you have people saying you can't do it. You have money on the line. You have and, a, a, an accomplishment to be the first man to do that. You know what I'm and saying? I, and I think I kind of knew it, but didn't quite understand it at the time. But that, that is what made the Beast brand so impactful yeah. and, and powerful in, in the social media world. It was that lift, that lift, because that has been watched. I mean, you look um, just, I, I had a look actually, the, just by chance uh, a couple of weeks ago, I looked on the uh, the Giants Live Facebook page. And that's yeah. just one, that's just one instance. Sure. And that was on 350 million views. Yeah. And that's just one avenue. That's you've crazy, got yeah. TV, you've got YouTube, you've got, it's been reposted several hundred times by oh, yeah, God knows sure. how many people. For sure. You know, that was shared every, you're talking billions of people. Billions of people saw that lift. Yeah, it's a lot. Billions. It's a lot. Yeah, and that, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. probably the most watched lift in history. Yeah, fact. Yeah. Well, it's it's hard. I don't know that you could come up with another one that would be more. No, yeah. I'm gonna say it was the X factor. It was the yeah. it was the Muhammad Ali approach of I'm gonna be the greatest deadlifter of all time, and there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd done it. Me- mentally, I mean, it's interesting uh, how you thrive off of different things like that. You know, and, and I think that um, I I my approach was different than yours in that regard, right? Like I I definitely had people say that I couldn't do things, but I was more private with it, right? Like yeah. I, I was more like, all right, I'm gonna go in and work really hard, or or I would see things that would motivate me, whatever it was, and people didn't even realize. A lot of times, they literally didn't even realize I would take away something 
from a conversation, from the way they acted, from, you know, maybe a different competition, whatever. And, and a lot of the guys uh, w- wouldn't even know what what would fuel me. But I would, yeah. I would take fuel from so many things and use it yeah. and I would take it back and use it. And, and, and it wasn't so public, but it was, again, I would go in and have conversations with, with my training partners or whatever. And, and I would pick these things to kind of fixate on that would, would motivate me and drive me really, really hard. And then you, you, of course, like I tried, I tried to stay away from too many comments, positive or negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But certain ones you'd pick up on and that would also add to the fire but it's interesting how you would stoke your fire man like you 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 again and you you really wanted to live this persona yeah of hey i'm the beast i'm gonna do whatever i want right yeah. and you would flip this switch bro and, and it was crazy right and it's it's i'm sure it's fun for you to look back to and maybe watch these different moments go down and yeah. and and relive it in a in a different way because everybody grows and changes through their path, right? So all of these things in your childhood that are shaping you into who you are there that if you didn't have that hardness, right? Like that, that layer, I'm going to call it a foundation that you, you maybe didn't want to build, but you had to build, you had to build resiliency. You had to build toughness, right? You had to build these things. And if you didn't have that, Bro, you would have crumbled yeah, yeah. under a lot of this, right? So that foundation, looking back, I'm sure made you be able to handle the negative and almost bounce off. It's it's just like like you can't touch me. Yeah. You don't know what I've been through. Yeah. Right? You do not you making that comment have no clue what I've been through and what I'm capable of, right? And I think that that's that's the unique factor that a lot of people won't understand yeah. looking in. Um, and I think that too many people right now, of all those people that maybe said those negative things, how many people walked up, and I'm sure there were maybe some, that literally said to your face, you're not going to do it? None. Right? Everybody, wanna, None. everybody wants to hide behind their phone and yeah, say yeah, yeah, negative yeah. things, or you yeah, can't yeah. do this, you can't do that, or whatever, like you're crazy. But but again, nobody wanted to say it, and that, that says a lot, right? Of course it does, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it it's interesting that your, your base, like your build up to you know, into strong man, you know, and you're, you're a, um, you're a guy that will push the boundaries there. That's, that's not like, I can say that very clearly. Like you're, you're, you're not going to shy away from a challenge, but you're also going to push to a level that most individuals will never even be able to comprehend. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like, like I did with the swimming. Yep. You know, uh, I remember my, my, my teammates at swimming used to say, you're never going to win the nationals. You're not going to beat that British record. You're not going to be an Olympic champion. Yep. And I did, you know, and I did thrive off that. I used to thrive off that negativity. I used to bounce off it, in fact. Yeah. And the same with like growing up and, and obviously getting into strong man. And me and you both growing up in an era where Facebook and Instagram and so only just came about this last sort of 10 years, hasn't it? You know, so it's only just come about this, this bullshit online. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think it's human nature when you go online and you read, like you put a post up and you put a lift up, or whatever, and you read the comments. There could be a thousand, po- there could be a thousand comments. Mm. Nine hundred and ninety-nine of them will be positive, yeah. but the one, the only one, will be negative, and that's the one you'll fixate on, and that's the one you'll walk away and walk into your training session and think, "Fuck you, you little prick! I'm going to show <laughs> you wrong. I'm going to show you wrong," you know. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's how we're, that's what I was sort of, that's how we're sort of programmed as humans to fixate on the negative and i suppose it's down in, in to the individual if you dive and, and dwell and, and, and implode on that yeah. and fold or you do the opposite and you you use it as a as a piece of log and you throw it onto a fire and you fucking you burn energy and you fucking go and chase that even harder yeah there's two types and i think me and you are the, are the, are the latter you know well you i think if you're going to be successful at a high level especially in the stuff uh, that we've done, you have to be able to thrive on that. Yeah. You have to, right? And you build this resiliency. So, you know, for you going back and looking at all of that, looking forward, what, what, are, what are your goals? Like, what do, what do you want to achieve? And, you know, you've done all of this. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like <clears throat> Sorry. that you want to have more of a 
impact on different people. Obviously, you've done a lot of speaking. You've you've done different kind of you know meet and greet type of things where mm-hmm. people get, get to come talk to you. I mean, you know those stories of people that have heard your story or seen your story or you know kind of watched you go through it and and um, you know you've been able to inspire you know how many different people, right? Like, well, how does that how does that go for you and and what you know what's ne- what's next? Like, what what do you want to achieve? Because you're not. You're not an old guy, right? No, like no. You, you've you've a, accomplished a lot um, in your life up to this point. So what what's what's next, or is it truly like right now you're still living with like, hey, I accomplished these things now. I've opened up some doors to have some freedom, um, and I'm I'm gonna just you know love my family and and spend more time there. You know what what is, what does the future look like? Well, I suppose after winning the world's strongest man, it was a a very confusing road. Because I did, I went on the road of capitalizing, you know, like you say, and you've been with me on the the shows. We've done talks, and you do endorsements, and you do sponsorships, and I've done we've done TV shows, yep. and I, you know, and we did the boxing fight. You yep. know, there's loads of opportunities that come along, and you sort of you grab them and you take them, and you know, you do well at them or you don't. Now, for me, since I've retired from Will Strongest Man, it's it's. It's been a tough journey of finding like your sole focus of what should I be concentrating on. Yeah. It has been tough. And I think I'm at the point in life now where I do know what's important. And I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger saying this, and it really hit home when he said it, and it's invest in children. And just this, this last sort of six, seven months, I, I, obviously after the fight, I've really took a step back and just thought, fuck it, I'm going to chill out for a bit. And I've started training with my son getting into weights and he started you know and he's fucking strong he is strong yeah and i'm enjoying it and he's enjoying it and that bonding time we're getting i've never felt so close so close to another human being yeah just having that bonding time with my son and i feel like that is now my purpose of course i've still got you know goals and ambitions to do well in business and i am doing yeah you know um i'm still growing on social media you know following's always going up it's still relative so to say yeah still making money from sponsorships and endorsements i'm still doing you know talks and meeting meeting greets and whatever and presenting to tv for will strongest man so I'm, i've got loads going on yeah but i think genuinely right now is you know i've said it for years and, and like i like i said you know that five weeks before will strongest man i was given that ultimatum you know what's more important Strongman or family? And at the time, strongman. Yeah. And you've asked me that question now, what's more important, your work or your family? I'm, I'm going to say family. Yeah. You know? Isn't and, that interesting? Yeah. It's interesting how you've come. Because, I mean, you have you are, and I said earlier, I think I made the comment, like, you, you know, everybody's got to kind of grow and evolve, like, through life. And if you're not, if you're not growing and evolving, and if you're not different at, for example, 35 than you are at 25. Yeah right then there's something's wrong wrong. yeah so i mean it's interesting to see your evolution in that way right and and it's neat like we were talking about you training with max a little bit and and you can see how proud you are right and spending this time with your son and and being able to kind of share that with him and i think it's it sounds like it's been a such a positive outlet for him um and that's something that hopefully will continue right like i and i've got to my boys are a little bit younger, obviously, so they come out and mess around and whatever. And it's 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 awesome. It's literally awesome to have them walk out in the gym. So I totally understand that. But yeah. they're not quite to the serious point where they're actually going to, you know, have any structure. I just want them to have fun. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, for you, man. And and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's been quite quite a journey, quite a journey that you've been through. You know, no, it has. It really has. I mean. To win, to get your dream at twenty nine, your dream goal to win the world's strongest man at twenty nine is it's young. Yeah, twenty nine is a very young age to you know sort of be able to look in the mirror and be content in life. It's a young age to achieve that. Yeah, and yeah, everything after that has been it's been a whirlwind to be yeah. honest. All the TV shows and everything, sure. all the talks, endorsements, the sponsorships, the the YouTube channel has been a been a load of fun you know, sort of like become your own boss and be, being your own producer and it's opened up loads of doors and, and, and i say now it's it's back to basics it's what's important and that's it's my wife it's my son you know that's what's important and regardless if if max wants to be a strong man when he grows up i don't really care about that you know it's just that bonding time of me and him absolutely. training that's yeah, all that, that's all that's important and and 
building, you know, the business side of things is 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 always growing. It's always getting bigger and better. And I've started, Max has started his own YouTube channel. That's awesome. Started doing that for him. And he's earning, he's earning good money. Yeah. You know, a 10-year-old kid is, is earning some good cash. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's quite scary what the what this new world of, of, of revenue is, is, is becoming. Yeah. Um, and building that for my son. Building that base. So, like, I, and again, I don't want to put any pressure on my son. Like, if my son wants to go off and be a policeman or, or work in a restaurant, whatever he wants to do, he can. But I'm going to make sure that base is there if he does work. Because he says he wants to be a strong man. Okay. So I'm building that base for him. You know, I started his YouTube channel. You know, yeah. that's got nearly 40,000 subscribers now. That's awesome, yeah. You know, uh, the Beast brand is slowly going to get passed down. Yeah. You know, he's already started, you know, the Beast Junior. You know, we're talking about doing the Beast Junior tops, the shakers, the proteins. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's building. I think that's going to be fun for me. Yeah. Is uh, building building a foundation for my son. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So up until this point, life's been life's been good. I can't, I can't grumble, really. Yeah, you know, it's had its ups and downs, but I've got so much to be grateful for, so much to be grateful for, and so much more to come. Yeah, you know. Well, I, and that's that's apparent, man. I mean, you know, I think with everything we've been through in the last however many years, you know, it's kind of like trying to open a new door and take a new journey and and grow in a different way. And um, you know, it's been it's been fun to watch, like me watching you kind of grow and 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 do different things as well. It is is been unique, man. You know, and obviously we have fun and, and uh, you know, there's, I think there's a lot more fun to come, you know, yeah, different no, stuff, definitely. different stuff we'll be doing together. But uh, no, um, I've got to say as well, Brian, I mean, I, I can talk about the su- success all day long and you can, a lot of people sit there when they're successful and they say they're self-made. Yeah. And that's bullshit. Yeah. It is because so many people help you along the way that are unbeknown and you're one of those. Without you even knowing it, you know, like, like I say, back in 2015, the amount I learned from you, there's little bits of advice you give me about physio and whatever else, and 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 now with the YouTube and, and now with the business side of things, you know, you've started your own brand of protein shakers and knee sleeves and everything else, and so yeah, as as, as much as you pay respect to me, I, I I pay just as much, if not more, back. So. I appreciate that, man. That's that, I mean, that's truly what it's all about, right? Like you you level up, and I think that. You know, for me, seeing the drive and and um, and passion that you brought to everything, that's you know, yes, we have a lot of fun, and we obviously give each other a lot of crap, and yeah. you know that type of thing. But I think it's it's out of a uh, a place where you have driven me to get better in ways, yeah. right? And I've I feel like I've done the same for you, and that's where a hundred percent. If that respect wasn't there, yeah, it wouldn't be as good. Because, we wouldn't be yeah. as better off, like. Uh-uh. If we didn't get along, like none of us would be, I don't think we'd be in the final financial position we would be now. Yeah. And that's yeah. the truth of it. We have, as you say, you make healthy competition. Yeah. Has, has made us both level up. Absolutely. Along the way. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm very thankful for it and thankful for the friendship more than anything. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Well, thank you for coming on, buddy. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. And I, uh, I know people will get a ton out of this, you know, and um, it, it's, uh, something I'm, I'm grateful for you sharing your story and, and um, you know, going through the highs and the lows and everything in between. And, mm-hmm. you know, just, I think there's a lot that people can take away from it. So if you guys listen to this, enjoyed it, if you got something out of it, please share the show because that's the way that we're going to grow the podcast and um, hopefully impact more people in a positive way, because that's ultimately the goal with this. Uh, it's my goal with it, you know, and, um, that can make the world a better place in a lot of different ways. So share the show guys, uh, appreciate all of you taking time to tune in and check out the episode. I hope you all are doing amazing for now. Going to be great. And we'll check you guys later. Big love.